scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. In this kingdom, we rise not just by desire, but how much light we have accessed and engage not only accessed i used to say accessed alone but i found out that was not very accurate we rise in this kingdom not just by how much light is available but how much light we have accessed and engaged you can access it meaning you are not in ignorance of his operation but not engage it you will not see anything we rise in this kingdom brothers and sisters on the strength of the light the illumination the precepts of the kingdom that we have both accessed and engaged accessing it is a product of humility and desperate pursuit but engaging it is the product of faith accessing the word is not faith it gives you potential to manifest faith until you begin to engage the word. I've said it that faith is simply a product of understanding, obedience, and courage. Understanding. You cannot act upon what you do not understand sustainably. Obedience. The ability to do to the latter and the courage to stay there regardless of the temporary results that you see. Are we together? So may I remind us again that desire is not enough to rise in the kingdom. I desire to encounter the anointing. Wonderful. But that in itself will never expose you to dimensions of the anointing. I desire to encounter the spirit of revelation. Wonderful. But that will not bring you into those dimensions. I desire to walk in kingdom wealth and prosperity wonderful but that will not bring it that way i desire to live long i desire to live strong i desire to be a leader i desire to be great our society is full of desire that's wonderful it's a good starting point except for the fact that desire alone will not amount to anything people desire to be anointed they desire to be blessed they desire to receive miracles they desire deliverance they desire healing but they stop at the level of desire and then believe that that's all they need to do no desire sponsors the appetite and the fortitude for pursuit when there is desire you will defy every excuse you will defy every consequence and pursue your pursuit gives you access your desire gives you the inner strength the tenacity the staying power to pursue information pursue light pursue an encounter are we together then if and when you have that encounter you have access to it now the next thing is to put your understanding to work to engage that truth you know the engaging part is where i truly believe that the church of the lord jesus christ has failed very well i have said it again and again that i don't believe the church of god is in ignorance necessarily by the grace of god the servants of god scattered around nigeria africa and the world have done 
well commendably well in being faithful dispensers of the mysteries of the kingdom are we together yes we give that credit to all the pastors the prophets the apostles the teachers and all the people who have contributed in supplying dimensions to the body of christ bridging the ignorance that is in the body but the results have not been very significant because we have stopped at the level of access and we believe that the moment you find truth automatically it should produce result no sir no sir truth must be engaged engaged to produce this mic has great potential to amplify my voice so that people can hear both within this vicinity and then through the power of the internet across the nations of the world but until this device is engaged accordingly not engage as you wish there is a pattern engage accordingly then it releases the full strength of it i can drop this mic and shout and there is a mic that is capable of amplifying my voice but i can turn and live a very very hard life i have access to the mic but i have not engaged it accordingly is that true so please let us deliver ourselves from this this um, is a combination of pride and folly that sweeps across the body of christ that because we have accumulated a compendium of a lot of knowledge it automatically means that our lives will be a reflection no sir accumulation of spiritual information does not produce result it is the supply of the grace and the advantage of that grace that you take to engage to engage engaging is very important to engage means to put the, the word of god to work you engage it and stay there then it is at the point of engaging the word that god's integrity is committed there are many people when you teach on tithing they will help you finish the message but they don't engage it they don't do it they do it occasionally how about those who do not engage the power of speaking the word in faith how many people know about the mystery of a dance the mystery of praise how many people really do it is that true it is the doing that's why when an evangelist finishes preaching it doesn't say now that you have listened to me you are going to heaven you can be in that crusade ground and go to hell you can even be part of the organizer and still go to hell at the end of it he gives room for engaging are you here and you want to give your heart to the lord and then people come out it is only those who come out that we pray for we bless everybody but we pray for those who come out as a sign that the message has touched them they have understood and they have responded in Acts chapter 4 the Bible says that Paul and um, Peter and, and, and John they were on their way to the temple and whilst they passed the beautiful gate the Bible says they saw a man that had been crippled from birth there at the gate asking for arms and the bible says that he requested that they helped him you know like beggars would do and then peter looked at him and said silver and gold i do not have any but such as i have i give unto you in the name of jesus he said rise up and walk access but the man was there the bible never said he got up then the bible says peter help me pastor alpha peter held his hands and forced him to engage you see it is at the point of obedience that the power is released not when the word just comes this is the dynamics of results until the word of god is engaged with faith and understanding the word of god is as barren as whatever it is so the bible says he held his hands and while he motioned on him to rest you see that at that point the bible says he leaping stood that guy would have remained there and the apostles would have gone the power of god hovering around how about god genesis chapter one the bible says there was darkness from the hebrew word to who darkness confusion and then the bible says the spirit of god the very force that is responsible for results and creation was hovering around but no change happened until god said and god acted he engaged 
and said let there be light be light appear reappear and then there was that and he said it and he saw it believers are largely not in ignorance so while we seek to open the body of christ to greater frontiers of revelation i am very concerned about our engaging the ones we know already because the truth of the matter is that if we commit ourselves diligently our life should begin to command certain levels of notable results you see the bible talks about a certain group of people it says they are ever learning is god blessing us already ever learning meaning that they have an appetite and that's supposed to be a good thing an appetite to explore let's glow deeper wonderful let's go higher wonderful but the question is what do you do with all the conferences and conventions and meetings and sunday services wednesday prayer meetings many believers receive prophecies they receive words they study the bible they read books they have volumes and volumes of jottings access but they do not engage and so at the end of it they are disappointed they are angry at themselves and at god and they are almost tempted to say lord your word did not work and god says no 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 let's be fair show me what you did from january till now how many times did you tithe? say lord let's not talk about that one just did you bless me or not and god says look at it lord you didn't heal me from the pain and God said, did you do what was told to do? The day an instruction was given to celebrate and praise. When the Bible says rejoice in the Lord, how many times did you commit yourself to obeying it? Rejoicing not just as what you want to do, but as a key to your breakthrough. Are we together? Engaging the word. Let me tell you something. The Bible says the kingdom of God, that you have to become like a child. Do you know why? Um... In our civilized 21st century society where we are so right conscious we don't want anybody violating on anything I, I, you know don't violate me i'm a citizen i'm intelligent i went to school we are so right conscious it's very difficult for us to submit ourselves to the simplicity of the truth of god's word are we together now the word of god declares this is what must be done to receive this outcome we argue we explain intellectually we bring all kinds of even spiritual and theological dissertations to explain away the simplicity and god says well i'm not the one in need you are the one who is looking for the solution look how difficult we make it to get the anointing look how difficult we make it to be prosperous look how difficult we make it to rise look how difficult we make it to get the power of god let me tell you the truth the difficulty is that i think sometimes we preachers do not show people where to engage the word we dispense the word but at the end of it we do not leave our sermons with the action point the very point and that's where members don't like that's why we like prophecies a lot because it's an extension of our desire to refuse to act upon the word most members hate it when you commit to them and say okay i have shown you this is now how you engage and they say no no can't you just, what is prophesy this thing and let me move forward i don't know how many people i counsel and i tell them oh apostle this is what is going on this is this and that and i tell them okay uh, go to the media stand pick one or two messages listen to it and come back i see how they turn and greet somebody and just move around and highest they check around and see um if there is an opportunity for joke and they you know believers were spiritually lazy not because we don't fast and we don't pray but that point of engaging the word one of the greatest blessings of the life and the ministry of bishop david oyedeko in my life is that among other things his nature of dispensing the word is such that he shows you what to do good master the rich man said what must i do to be saved he wasn't saying can i save myself lord i know that it is within your character to partner with men where is my own part of the deal we hate this talk and you know 
the western world may god bless them we have received so much from them but i think that this this error of allowing god to do everything to show his sovereign claiming that and whether we add anything to it or not it cannot be done no brothers and sisters listen the bible says the heavens even the heaven of heavens is the lord it says but the earth has he given to the sons of men there will always be a cooperation a partnership between god and men for anything serious to happen god is still sovereign but he has chosen to limit himself so that men can also be reflectors of his glory please learn this if anything is to change in your life it is not all up to god there is a part where you have access to light and then engage that light access to it and you engage it not access alone we have done pretty well in understanding it so as i dispense these truths by the grace of god alongside all the men and women of god scattered in this nation and around the world please i like us to make a commitment that we will not only be hearers will not only be receivers in terms of just hearing it into our ears but that we will always search for the areas that will require our own partnership your partnership with the word of god does not negate what god has done your partnership with the word of god is what makes it your experience until you partner with the word of god it remains a prophecy or a promise it is your engaging the word that converts every promise to your testimony to your experience right from the foundations of the earth the lamb has been slain but the day you hand over your life to jesus that's the day salvation becomes your experience is that true the bible says by his stripes we are healed but the day you hear the word you receive it and engage appropriately the bible says again and again that the lord gives men power to prosper but this is not our experience for many of us in the body of christ the day we are willing to not only receive the precepts but sustain the grace you see this is the, this is the true idea of grace i told you grace is like love grace has love has depth height that's how grace is there is a dimension of god's grace that is his unmerited favor or unmerited access that means god kept that dimension exclusive to himself because there is absolutely nothing any man can do for instance the grace that saves men are we together now there is nothing a man can do by his own strength to save himself you can only partner but there is a dimension of grace that is an empowerment to do you will do the doing it's just that the energy is not yours now this is the dimension of the grace of god that the body of christ has not understood so he empowers you with a capacity that is more than what you ordinarily would do then he will grant you grace so he supplies that grace are we together now yes if i prophesy to pastor alpha now i am operating i am doing the speaking it is willing he's not opening my mouth i'm opening my mouth by myself but i am communicating an intelligence that is not given to mere men that intelligence you call it the gift of the spirit you call it the prophetic is what the bible calls grace the power to do the power to do bless you sir are we together if we begin to pay attention to engaging the things we already know brothers and sisters i submit to you that our lives will be a thousand times better than it is in every wise the problem truly speaking is not ignorance i told you again and again and i'll continue to say it i do not believe the body of christ as a corporate entity is in ignorance there are still greater lands to conquer in the spirit there are still deeper dimensions that god will open us but you see the system of god is he studies what you have done with what he has given you first and that qualifies you to receive more the parable of the five two and one talent the bible says that when he granted unto them stewardship the one with five talents engaged correct the one with two talents engaged the one with one talent just buried it and left it there when the master came for accountability he said well um you were a hard man 
You like reaping where you don't sow. So I, I just thought instead of wasting my time, I kept it on the ground. I can go and remove your thing, collect your thing. The Bible says they collected it from that man and gave it to the one with five talents. So you see, increase is a product of doing something with the grace and the dimension God has given you. A pastor who will not pastor two members or ten members with all his heart and bless them and sits down pasting pictures of a million members is joking and dreaming a man of god who will not engage diligently god gives you ten thousand naira you mismanage it carelessly you do not find out the principles of god there's nothing in it for god there is no system of accountability and wise use of it you can't sit down and be mesmerizing on one million ten million god does not work like that are we together how about anointings there are men of god who admire their whole assignment is more power and god says calm down the grace i've given you is enough to save souls even if it can't heal sick bodies now show how you have engaged that grace enough to be able to open you up to other access and say lord what is salvation anybody can do it then god grants you the grace for intercession and he said, Lord, that one is too hard. I need power, direct, raw power to just prophesy or lay hands. And God says, no, it will never work that way. Never work that way. God is revealing to us as simple as what I'm sharing is. God is showing us the reason why the issues of our lives don't change. It's not because the word of God has failed. It is because we seldom engage the word. We complain we receive the word let me tell you what most of us do you know when when people complain about certain areas i ask them have you listened to this my teaching before i finish they smile and the person is not getting the result and he will listen now he say ah, have you listened to um, um 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 evidence of genuine intimacy they help you finish it <laughs> and you look at this guy and you know that this guy doesn't know god for sure are we together now yes then you tell him go and listen to it and he plays around while he's just listening distracted doing a lot of things gisting with friends and then catching up and then he tells you sir i just finished there are there are certain teachings one hour teaching but i finished them in three days one hour teaching in three days because every five five minutes i'm stopping jesus something just entered my spirit i see I was studying something there and I almost jumped. I almost jumped from my bed. I said, Yeah, yeah, what is this? He said, I've not read this Bible before. I had to look at it again. I found my biro, drilled the thing again. I don't know what I caught years ago that made me draw it, but that ink was already fading. I drew a fresh one to remind me that this is a fresh revelation. What? This is the Bible? Opened up another light for me. You finish a three hours message you never pause <laughs> to listen to learn even when something is very powerful you are just saying, wow just continue even the way you study in school brothers and sisters that's not how you do well you pause the psalmist will say sila pause ponder think write if need be pray if need be hallelujah if you don't like what I'm saying, forget about results. God is not a herbalist. Hallelujah. Yes. Look at the aspects of your life. You will see that there are certain areas you are in total ignorance. But you will see that there are certain areas you already have the requisite knowledge, truthfully speaking. You already know what to do and the grace has been supplied. But that spiritual nature, that laziness to comply accordingly and stay until results manifest, that's what causes a lot of trouble. What do you have in your house? Nothing except a cruise of oil. And the prophet said, that's it. Madam, this is what I want you to do. Go. Why didn't the prophet prophesy? Vessels, find your way to this poor woman's house. Say, madam, carry the energy you have left and go and borrow vessels he said borrow not a few when she came she met him and said sir i've done as you have said he said now you qualify for the next instruction 
close your door. She would never receive the next instruction if she did not obey the last one. Is God speaking to us? Yeah. And he said, close the door. When you close the door, start engaging the oil. The oil has capacity to give you any kind of miracle. But when engaged, and the Bible says she kept pouring and the oil kept multiplying. How about the widow in Zarephath? When the prophet came, he said, woman, how are you? Fine, sir. Water, please. Ah, I don't have much, but I'm a generous woman. And just bake the remaining bread for me. He said, we're about to eat with my son to die. He said, madam, I'm, I'm here not because I'm hungry. I'm here so that you will survive. So just handle this treasure is in eating vessels. You better quickly come and feed me first. The woman would have said, you are such a heartless and stupid man. You are the prophet they've been talking about. You are a wicked man. I would make sure I tell all those who have you are. Ah, ah, you see me and a child. You don't even love women. And start another funny women movement and say, look, there are prophets who don't, they collect things from women. And the Bible says that she her engaging that thing, all of a sudden she turned and discovered that the flower. I'm showing you how this works. How about three days? They spent three days on the mountain. And then the people said, these guys are hungry. There will be commotion here now. And Jesus said, feed them. Said, ah, feed them. Even a year's worth of food. No miracle could happen until there, there was something from men. And Andrew found a young boy and carried his bread, his, his lunch box as they call it. And all of a sudden, Jesus lifted it and gave thanks and there was multiplication. Who taught you that things happen by themselves? It is the dynamics of the workings in terms of God's part that is none of your business. The Bible says just as you do not know the way bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child, nor the way of the wind. That's how you cannot tell the work of God. There is a part of this equation that you can never know. It is sponsored by the wisdom of God. For instance, how your destiny helper will come is not your business. Your own is to engage what brings them. Your destiny helper can be a donkey. A donkey needs to be missing for you to find Samuel. Doesn't matter. You think if God asks Saul to choose how he will receive the anointing, will he choose the, the disappearance of a donkey? Leave the acting to God. Your own is obey to the latter. And then you will watch God use anything to act that drama until you receive the anointing. Let me tell you where spiritual fatigue comes. When we want to know how the details. How will I pay my rent? Lord, I know you are faithful, but let's... Let's be honest here. And God is saying me. You are telling me to be honest. <laughs> Do you believe what I'm saying? Yes. So we don't engage the word at all. At all. Master, if it be thou, bid me come. And Jesus said, really? You want to see a new dimension? I've given you a word. Engage it. Come. All of them stood and said, oh yeah. He didn't say, Peter, come. He just said, come. Whoever walked. He said, come. And all of a sudden, Peter got up and walked. And it was, it, it was surprising Peter. I'm walking. And he was laughing. And all of a sudden, he was about sinking. Many people see the sinking part. They don't see the part that Jesus stopped him from sinking because he had to be responsible over his word. Peter's mistake at the point of obedience had to be addressed by Jesus himself. If Peter sank, Jesus would be to blame. After all, Jesus knew he was learning. He said, come. Obey him and perish. And watch whether you will really perish. Listen, learn this. I'm teaching you how faith works. Peter. He held him and said, no. If you walked on your own, like Jonah, Jonah was not helped because he was in disobedience. So the whale swallowed him. What bailed Jonah out was mercy. Are we together? These are the systems of the kingdom. This is how it works.
guys go and preach in my name heal the sick cast out devils and jesus ah, jesus won't you go with us say no 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 just go i've given you my name say where is it say just believe keep going and when they met the first sick person um my name is sir you saw me with that other guy he really sent us i'm not really sure about this i've not mastered it but i hope you are not offended if i prayed for you and peter laid hands on someone and all of a sudden to his shock peter said this thing is working let's do it again they returned back to jesus and said hi jesus even the devils that we fear so much were subject to us in thy name and jesus said that those are little issues let's talk about don't rejoice because of that be honest with yourself tonight is it really that god has not been faithful or you have not engaged the word you have been told that prayer and fasting are keys for true revival and spiritual power be honest with yourself have you engaged it with understanding don't sit down and say god is not anointing me what do you think the anointing is not a charm You eat anything, anywhere, anyhow, anytime. No, sir. No, sir. How about breakthrough? There are many of us that want breakthrough. You hear people, the fact that God is doing it to one person. that per You see, do you know why we allow testimonies? The most important part of testimonies is not the result. It's the bridge between the problem and the solution. What did the person do? That's what your spirit should be sensitive about. For many of us, we wait till the end of it. Then we say, wow, you mean it? This is how I live my life. I don't sit down and tell God, Lord, create the changes. I say, no, Lord, I know. I give you all the praise. Show me my own part. And I stand up and start engaging it. Start engaging it. Start engaging it. What of our family members? Oh, God will you keep watching us like this and god says no listen to joshua selman oh god i don't have the time i'm like i was saying will you keep changing our lives and god says you are violating an ordinance it's not going to change husband is standing wife is standing children are standing devil is destroying that family and wrecking their lives they are arguing with one another and not interested in change God says, listen, when it comes to this thing, you can't help yourself. It is by a prophet that the Lord brought them out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. Even if you are a midwife, when you are about to give birth, you need another midwife to help you. That you are a midwife does not mean you can deliver yourself. Listen to this and understand. There are systems in the kingdom. A time comes when your personal anointing cannot give you the breakthrough you are looking for. Hmm. is God helping us so so many people arrogantly sit down and say what is there is it not man of God man is it not the same Jesus that died for us and they sit down there and their problems continue to compound and multiply whereas there is enough grace to trivialize that problem and reduce 10 years of problems in a moment how long Please help me. How long? Listen, I think it was in it was in Mina over the weekend. We were preaching for um, Bishop. It was it was such a an awesome time with him and uh, Bishop Achaya. And I was sharing there. I said every anointing. Listen to me. Every challenge has the level of anointing that can address it. That you are anointed is not generic in results. The anointing is levels. When your challenges are higher than your level of anointing or the level of anointing close to you, you're already in trouble. There are three ways to come out of that thing. Grow in the anointing to a level where it can surmount it or trust God for access to personalities whose price in the spirit has granted them access to the level of grace that can throw away that problem. Brothers and sisters, in my little life, I've had the privilege of seeing what the anointing of the spirit how it can rubbish a situation that is within the level the jurisdiction of that anointing to solve it almost in a moment in a twinkling of an eye and that challenge is gone 
but I've also seen how frustrated an anointed man can be in the face of a challenge that is higher than your level of anointing. It will rubbish you as if you have never met God. Believe what I'm teaching you. If the mysteries of the kingdom are not engaged, this family now will get up and say, okay, we have read in the Bible. And let me tell you what happens. They begin to pray. At least it's a starting point. While they pray, the Holy Ghost will take the mother or the father to a scripture and said, study the life of Saul of Kish. Do everything they did. And so they start studying. A donkey was missing. We, for us, an animal was not missing. Let me show you how the, the Holy Spirit helps people. What is missing? Joy, peace, love, breakthrough, finances, spiritual upliftment. What did they do? They started moving around and a servant said, let's go and meet a man of God. And the Holy Spirit says, go and do likewise. And they stand up and the Holy Spirit now tells them, look, there's a miracle service coming. You see, the word of God is becoming alive. You are acting. You can sit down at home and say, God has brought it. He said we should go for the miracle service and then give all kinds of flimsy excuses. It is raining. I'm not very happy. I didn't eat well. We were not joyful yesterday. Those things are the ways demon spirits keep people. But when you stand up as you are walking to come, heaven is recording your obedience and already scheduling the system for your miracle. Now, while you are coming, you are not even sure you will meet me, but you are coming anyway. While you are coming, you are not even sure you will have space. But you are coming anyway. Are you seeing how this thing works? You come anyway and you sit down. And to your greatest shock, it was never for you to meet me. While the praise and worship is on, fire lands on your situation. And all of a sudden, you see someone calling you repeated calls and you have to avoid it. After Konya or whatever program, you just go and check and someone is calling you and saying, sir, Remember, we were supposed to strike a deal and it didn't work. I, my spirit was moving me and you say, God, this is you. Let me show you how breakthrough happens. Breakthrough is worked. It's like the working of miracles. You know how you cook food. You don't drop onions, pepper, fish, whatever it is you drop on the table and just shout and say, food, cook. No, you work it. How do you work it? You get a pot firewood or whatever you are using you start engaging sometimes it will be painful as you are cutting something knife can cut you but you are more interested in the food than that temporary pain it's by eating the food the pain will be healed so continue and at the end of it you have a lovely meal and everybody who comes around wonders brothers and sisters it is true that god gave grace but you worked it are we together this part of engaging the word is what I want. I want to drum it into our spirits. Nothing will change in your life just because you are a Christian. The word of God must be engaged. Hallelujah. Mm. Sacrifices, praise, several things. You must engage the word of God. There are some of us here, you have never sown a seed I'm not saying to me, please don't get what I'm saying. But you have never, most of us is 95% receiving, 5% giving. You will be broke forever. That's the equation of poor people. Are we together? Yes. Give me, your own is to collect. Lord, who is going to give me? And the Lord says, when are you going to create your own harvest? Have you not heard that if the cloud be full of rain, if you use a spoon to, spend, to send vapor to the air, you will spend your whole life. There are other people who don't allow challenges to last. They walk it till it gives up. They walk it till it gives up. I believe in results. I'm motivated by results. I'm very, very outspoken about results. I'm not one of those people who lie to you and say it doesn't matter. It matters, sir. Results matter. Human beings were designed to remain motivated when what you engage produces. Is that true? Yes. When a woman gets pregnant, we are happy for her pregnancy and we can endure everything that the pregnancy carries provided there will be a child at the end. Is that true? Yes. 
when somebody like the people sharing now the lady that was sharing about the rigor that she went through you know not the most important thing is that finally the result is cleared and all of that when you do things the pain is when you put so much energy and time and then it does not yield results this is what i want to cancel from our life hallelujah breakthroughs are predictable hmm. the help of god is predictable the mercy of god is predictable results are predictable please my brother my sister let me beg us in the name of jesus to not sit down and hope things change i'm delivering you from it because after 10 years it will remain like that until it changes there are people who as of january this year wrote down a list of certain things they submitted it and asked questions lord how do i engage with you and right now god has ticked those things with results there are others all they do every miracle services god arise for me they drop it every instruction god gave from january till now they have not done one lift up your hands they won't lift up pray they won't pray celebrate god dance around all these things how can i be a child we left these things am i in a party see that i told you about dancing i don't like dancing it's not anything i admire at all but it's a it's a key you know how drugs are how you swallow drugs sometimes when you swallow drugs especially maybe a syrup it can be so bitter especially when you are giving children they are trying to deny but your love keeps them there swallow it when they swallow it you pamper them later on swallow it do you pity the child oh yeah i'll leave you like that no that's how it is when you are obeying god don't pity yourself oh no sir don't pity yourself abraham carried isaac and said up we go when he kept looking at us, Isaac, I love you, but this one. See, be careful. Some of us get too emotionally connected to every area of our lives that is difficult for us to get to the next level. You are emotionally connected to your money. You are emotionally connected to your title. You are emotionally connected to whatever. That's why it is difficult for us to give up things to go high. You are emotionally connected to your ministry my ministry the word of god works it is reliable this is how god has helped us by his mercy to be where we are today and this is how he will help us to rise but the key is that we engage the word the key is that we engage the word we don't sit down and make god responsible for everything and laugh around and fool ourselves that's not faith no that's not faith you must take inventory of your life you'll be surprised to know that this is not even my message this night i just came and this thing started boiling in my spirit god is my witness whom i serve that i am passionate about seeing every one of us produce results see let me tell you if you are a man of god and you are the only one rising you are you are a big failure doesn't matter what you whether it's car house no i rather fail as a person and you succeed your success will turn me into a success you see that let me be honest with you in all sincerity some of the things i teach you god has helped me in those areas so it's not like i'm teaching with any interest for myself i'm hearing a song in my spirit hallelujah thine the glory hallelujah amen hallelujah thine the glory revive us again hallelujah thine the glory hallelujah amen hallelujah
hallelujah thine the glory revive us hallelujah lord i want to become a public speaker you dropped it here you have not engaged the word you found a scripture but you have not done anything with it lord i want to become a man of god and the only thing you are thinking about is starting a church you know sometimes sometimes the way the way we pastors behave is why we keep struggling forever brothers and sisters if you have eight days to cut a tree use seven days sharpening the knife use seven solid days stand in the sun and sharpen the knife i promise you you will hit that tree once and it will fall but you can carry a blunt knife axe and even if they give you 90 days the tree will not fall hallelujah don't jump into things take out quality time to engage this thing engage this thing God is calling, let me use your promise, come. God is calling promise into ministry, for instance. Go and start a ministry in Delta or start a ministry in U.S. And the, the only thing he does is, just says, wow, I, I have learned enough. You just jump and go to Delta. And after five years, you are still roaming around as if God didn't call you. In that five years, those who engage the world are swimming in grace. Whereas you are there frustrating the grace of God. After 10 years, you now leave it and say you want to go and join military or police. They say your age has passed. You now say you want to join something else and your life and you blame God. And God says, no, you refuse to engage the word. I told you time never changes anything. It only reveals. Time reveals whether you have been engaging properly or you have been wasting your time. But God calls this guy now and he sits down, Lord, what kind of ministry are you giving me? Oh, this is this. And he's studying, he's learning, he's building. How do we do church finances in a way that you don't play pranks on people? He's learning. How do we build membership? When members cross 500, how do you manage them? You are learning. How do I grow in the anointing? When I have three to five sermons to preach every week, how do I manage it with my family life? What if I have a business running? How do I manage it? This gentleman works on himself. I tell you, he gets up and in one year, start a ministry and all the forces that should be there are there. Everything done well. Whereas another person is struggling and angry. Now, this is anger is usually a product of frustration. When you try to do things and you are angry, and someone comes and it becomes effortless. You see, one of the proof of mastery is how effortless you are when you when you execute your plans effortlessly. How are you doing it? And people begin to coin explanations. I don't want to live a life of a failure i don't want to number one it does not glorify god number two is going to waste my time number three there are many people connected to me in the spirit and my failure is going to affect them and destroy them and tear their lives into pieces one of my greatest fears if i have any is to walk and to walk with god for a long time and then to find that the things are believed I lie that's why I'm meticulous about the construction of my beliefs Lord what I believe about finances is it accurate what I believe about the anointing is it accurate what I believe about fasting and prayer is it accurate I'm not ashamed though if at any point I find out there is a problem I'm not ashamed I, okay Lord let's look at this this is what I used to believe but now I'm seeing I'm learning this Wow amazing I'm growing and you are just let me tell you something there are many anointings to lift our family members but it is at the mercy of their engaging they only complain and insult they insult every anointing that can bring them breakthrough and they sit down and hope and wish they will learn 
you will be surprised and i don't mean to be sarcastic you'll be surprised to know how many people live within this vicinity who have never received of what god is doing it will be shocking and surprising are you hearing what i'm saying now the trouble is you are the one who is the patient who cries the patient or the hospital please talk to me when the patient insults the hospital does the hospital have tears the hospital will, will be busy treating those who are ready is that true lord i don't want to live my life as a failure results can be commanded this thing has been done before i'm not asking you where you agree up whether it's in your village or whatever i'm not asking what has happened in your life brothers and sisters this anointing we talk about is god's own ability but are we willing to engage it to produce the required result do it honorably and fail and the lord will do for you what he did for peter he held his hand and lifted him this is how god brought some of us my brother my sister it's not as if anybody signed and gave any guarantee and say start ministry if you need money we'll support you start ministry if you need members no 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 engaging by faith when people see the results they trivialize it sometimes people just talk all kinds of things but then they do not know that these things were engaged access is not enough the word the truth the mystery the principle the revelation must be engaged it must be engaged it must be engaged there is a part you have to play play it and watch god watch god arise for you as a mighty god and turn things around for you hallelujah do you believe what i'm sharing with you this thing does not take time it just takes commitment if i'm building a house listen and i have workers building a house for me and they are working they start working by six and by night there are those who do night shift and are working is that true and there is another lazy builder the workers come by 10 they close by two whose house will be built first you see that now the amount of commitment you give to this thing determines the result it will deliver to you there is no way around it i watch our fathers of faith and i'm surprised that with the kind of results they command you still see them engaging this thing they are working it with all their heart i was watching a video by dr paul and and um, i'm saying this only because he said it he was preaching this year at um bill winston's ministry and the lord's garden the magnificent structure that they are building around the airport road in abuja and he said just for the the zinc alone just to cover that place they are spending 16 million us dollars zinc not building 16 million us dollars in a time of recession debt free now only a fool and a stupid person 16 million dollars will more than answer the request of many ministries times 10 and this is what is used for zincing so a wise person says this is the result i'm looking for it is on earth already happening in someone's life so what do you do you follow them who through faith and patience what did he engage because he was not born like that as at 1999 god servant dr paul and nature was in one room in abuja there were people who were in the houses they are still there today because they didn't engage anything as at 99 he was there with his wife in one room and all of a sudden rises to do something there are people still there today brothers and sisters if your life must change it's not up to god alone god's power is available i have indoctrinated myself into being a responsible believer that nothing will ever change just like that hallelujah 
what are you doing in partnership with the word of god do you understand the principle and the mystery that connects your challenge or your desire and the outcome do you understand then if yes are you engaging completely the future will show the mysteries and the things that koinonia is engaging is is not it's not something to blow trumpet and talk about now but the future will tell what is being engaged today you see that something i do not know is responsible for where i am something i know but have not believed is also responsible for where i am something i have believed but have not acted upon consistently is responsible for where i am while you are seated can you pray cry to god and say lord i repent i've been handing over the responsibility of my results entirely to you but now i have heard you i have seen it very clearly that nothing will change by itself are you praying some of you are looking at others forget about them and cry for your destiny apostle i graduated since five years ago nothing has happened in my life show me what you are engaging first let me see what you have done i thought i would have a job who told you you will have a job just like that show me the mystery you engage and the mystery you are engaging keep praying show me what you are engaging apostle i expected that by now i should not be begging for food to feed my family show me what you are engaging or are you just waiting for things to happen show me apostle i expected by now that my ministry should be strong enough financially show me what you are engaging let me see it apostle i expected that by now i should be flowing at certain levels of the prophetic certain levels of the anointing show me what you are engaging sir i expect that i should be established by now i should have had a car and a house show me what you are engaging don't just wish for nothing i've been coming to church that's not enough what have you engaged pray nothing will ever change my brother my sister access to truth is not enough it must be engaged though access to truth is not enough apostle i've listened to all your messages on favor wonderful have you done what was said in the message consistently have you done what was said in the message having the readiness to judge every disobedience if and only when your obedience is complete let's not turn god to a game player playing pranks and 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 expect strange results pray you don't commit 30 minutes to god 30 minutes of your life the remaining part of your life and you want to carry fire which god are we talking about here prayer zero word life zero passion and hunger for spiritual things zero and you want to carry the anointing no sir no sir no sir no sir show me the time you commit to study show me the time you commit to sacrificing your sleep show me how you engage with the word show me the videos you watch show me the retreats the times alone that you spend with god and i can tell you why your result is the way it is it's not magic it's not magic it's not magic hallelujah listen to me you know let me say this honestly there are many men of god who see ministries that god has blessed with crowds like this 
and they do not know the enormous responsibility of pastoring thousands of people they think all about standing here sometimes you see me stand here let me confess and tell you truly most of the time i stand here most times i'm waiting on god is when i go back that i eat something there are times that the water you see me take here is the first thing that is entering my stomach as i stand i'm not saying that's what you must do after service you see me stand here to see people sometimes past 12 last week i went home to one don't want crowd if you cannot engage what is going to be there are we together now yes, we want things without the responsibility attached to it you before you barely rest someone has woken you there is a challenge you when i came you saw me talking on phone and i called the protocol because they needed to respond to an emergency somewhere the people don't care that there is service listen let me tell you for every dimension there is a price i, I wish i don't know how to make you believe this thing if you are unwilling to pay the price please forget about the dimension there are levels of anointing that when it comes to your life the moment certain things are not done it will destroy you it's better for it to have not come believe what i'm telling you jonah 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 entered a boat and people they started losing things and when they were checking they said what is making this boat heavy jonah said i'm the one no if i were not anointed i would have slept quietly but because of what i carried you are suffering for something now there are levels to not pray for when you are not ready for certain sacrifices oh god open my eyes are you ready to pray for everything you see because you will see things that would disturb you you are about to rest and you see a plane crash you are about to rest and you see a car crashing somebody and if it happens that way god will call you and say if your eyes were closed you are free but hence you cried and said open my eyes it's not about prophesying you no know, there is a responsibility oh god make me rich let me be your distributor and god stands and says as you are leaving your house now carry fifty thousand. my people are in need of it yes sir ah, oh god you said you want to be my steward oh yeah carry it and somebody comes and while you're talking says give five thousand to sam there are two little children give all of them one one thousand and you are acting like a fool and god says that's how my distribution system works the day you are not interested i close the heavens as simple as that I see a lot of greedy people admiring blessed people and think that there are people for over two months your offering is 10 naira or one year 10 years you drink is five for life how much is five for life and then you squeeze as an adult working class you come to church with 10 20 naira and drop it and say but what are these young people doing are you joking brothers and sisters let me submit to you if you ever try to sow seeds like me it may kill you in one month i'm telling you this sincerely lord make me a millionaire he says are you ready to sponsor 70 children say no no i don't want that oh god you gave me only two he says that's it whoever wants it my way must be ready to do my bidding hallelujah thine the glory hallelujah amen hallelujah thine the glory revive us is god speaking to us tonight stop claiming things blindly when there is no sincerity oh god give me a give me an international anointing okay do you have the grace to counsel to preach three five times a week can you be sleeping on the road can you be sleeping in the air that becomes your new bedroom can you sacrifice that much it's not all about putting water and clapping it's a sacrifice let me tell you this and i stand before the god of heaven thank god he's here you are spiritual people less than 15 percent of my prayers is for myself god is my witness 
less than 15 percent for myself father bless your people change their story a text message comes sometimes you don't see me reply your text message it doesn't mean i don't pray over it do you have the sacrifice can people come to your house and you carry your last meal and give them everything and then they don't tell you thank you and god said it's none of your business leave the issue is between me and you please listen to me oh these are the engagings it's not just about honor it's not just about sitting i'm ready to be a man of god are you ready for the criticism everything about your life is an open book everybody criticizes everything can you sit down hearing people criticize you and still sleep sound and get up in the morning some of you who are so sensitive i think you stole my phone how can i be the thief and you are moving around and you want to do ministry you must be broken and you must be worked on by god is god speaking to us this teaching is very sincere most of us see blessed people and just admire them and i look at the greed that is in many people's lives greed you can sit down somebody saying i've not eaten there is one thousand naira in your pocket you say go and meet apostle go and meet apostle he, 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 he likes giving just talk to him and he will give you and this is the person holding one thousand naira and you are saying oh god when will you visit and god even scholarship you will not see for where are we together this is how this thing works so send 200 naira recharge card to your mother you rejected it whereas somebody transferred 1000 to you and god says take 200 say how, how many and it's not like there is an important discussion and god says i'm watching your heart you are not engaging this thing let me show us why we are really not getting results let's be honest with ourselves am i engaging the word Cain got angry because of Abel's results. And God said, no, no, this is not about Abel. If you do what Abel did to the latter, will you not get his result? Hear me. It doesn't cost God to raise help for you. There is something we are not doing that is keeping the heavens closed. There is something a man of God is not doing that's why his ministry is not growing there is something a father a mother a brother a sister is not doing that's why we are perpetually in lack and suffering and penury every guy that comes to me lives in two weeks five guys have come sister calm down could there be that there's something you are no 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 there's nothing wrong with me yeah, i just happen to have bad luck with stupid guys five of them stupid that means something in you is attracting them because you draw your kind to yourself the body of christ likes passing blames we blame witches we blame pastors we blame government we blame our parents let me tell you your miracle starts the day you get a chair or go behind one tree and sit down. i'm surprised seeing many gentlemen their lives are not moving they are not doing anything after koinonia you're just looking at any sister who can i now marry you this one that time is going and there's nothing happening you see what we're saying A gentleman who will go and sit down with a biro and your Bible and a tape recorder. Lord, it can't be this way. The word of God is coming every day. Why is my life like this? I am 31. I am 35. I am 40. I'm seated. I, can, I have to beg for Gary. Lord, I love you. Something is wrong. And all of a sudden, you come there. Your friend is calling. Say, leave me alone. No, you better leave me alone. Say, is this your? Did you renew your DSTV? Say, don't near my house. You have been deceiving me for many years. And you sit down, and all of a sudden, the word of the Lord comes. This sitting down is what we don't do. We stand up, moving around. This hustling life, pillar to post. One thing is needful. Sit down first. 
stand up as instructed don't move around just like that he, he, see the labor of the fool the engaging of a fool weary at every one of them because he doesn't know the road to the city not every action is profitable it is the action that is done in obedience and through understanding apostle i'm anointed i'm surprised i organize a meeting and nobody comes there is something you need to know more about the anointing it's more than laying hands apostle people come to my church they receive miracles and go back that means there is something you need to know about leadership you have done well knowing about miracles but there is something you do not know about leadership please blast in tongues for one minute and say lord i'm tired of this level i'm tired of this level i'm tired of this level i'm tired of this dimension i'm tired of this face lift your voice and pray lord i know you are ever faithful pray i take responsibility tonight there is something I am not engaging adequately. Zekete koto soto kata prakatash. Lekete proske sekete marakato sebiada. Hela mase na na male na mase na 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 na. Hallelujah. Please sit down. The Lord has brought before us several keys, mysteries, secrets that are responsible for certain outcomes. Brothers and sisters, it's up to us. There are lazy people waiting for others to enjoy, to engage it, then they enjoy the benefit. You cannot sit down and be dependent forever. Our little children should be the ones waiting. But an adult, oh, you know that thing they say in Hausa, Ale Baka Musamu. So while you are engaging, I'm resting. After all, you'll be too kind to leave me like that. The Bible says, right from the days of John the Baptist, even until now, the kingdom suffered violence. And the violent would take it by force. Someone who will say, No way, Lord, I will force what is my portion from the realm of the spirit life does not deliver anything to careless less as fair if it happens it happens no everybody who receives anything worthwhile are those who stand in life and force their own force it down this passive i know one day things will happen we are not angry enough that's why we have not broken the back of certain things in our life We are learning. I've shared with you. There are some of us, the reason why we are not getting results in our lives is because we ignore God. I've shared these principles. You don't ignore God and prosper, sir. Okay, um, I'm a businessman. Me, I'm not into ministry. Ignore God and see. Ignore God and watch the devil rubbish your life. Many business people don't honor God. They honor business. They honor men. But they don't honor God. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. How many people start working and they, they don't have time for God? Time for the house of God? No. Time for the things of God? I'm a bit busy. Lord, you know that I'm, I'm engaged. And God says, hey, you are engaged. And then the devil comes to rubbish your life and your work. One sickness arises and just destroys you. Somebody in your office looks at you and says, let me see how you will rise to the next level. And that's, it is they that know their God that shall be strong and do exploits. 
to, the fierceness in today's world does not require guessing about God. You must know God. Hallelujah. I've said it humorously. Only God can tell the number of charms and shrines and herbal places that have my names on their altars. Only God knows the people who project me as I sleep to make sure I don't wake up. This man you see is here for a long time. Very long time. Is that true? Yes. Some of us have refused. We have been drumming mental development. And we have refused. So we are mediocre where we are. It's amazing how when the word of God comes, people exempt themselves. Say, this part is not for me. This is the part for me. No. All scripture was inspired. How many? All scripture. God can be talking about mental development. And you can say, me, for me, I'm a man of prayer and fasting. Leave that one for um, um, mental development. All those who want to become professors and lecturers. For me, this is a vineyard. And you are there and you find out that because your mindset is thinking wrong, regardless of your results. L listen, being around the truth and not engaging it can destroy you. Because it will bring about familiarity. You are familiar with every man of God, every program, everything. Yet, it will not bless you. Those that were close to Jesus ran away. They were not getting anything. Nicodemus came and met him once in the night and received something that changed his life. Mental development. Mental development. Upgrading your mind. Expanding your capacity to be relevant in today's world and grants you the opportunity to glorify Christ. How about people who do not understand authority? This is the mystery they have not engaged. And that's why the devil whips them left, right, and center. Left, right, and center. They have no honor, no regard for anybody on earth. Some of our parents are like that. Like that. Just say, hey, so so man has come to town. Which man? So why are people going to go and see him? What's the spell? You see, you see, and, and they start debating it. And the person debating is poor and broke and sick and suffering. He does not know that it is for this cause. Many are weak. Many are sick. And many do sleep. He sits down there and a miracle is close to him. Sometimes in his neighborhood. And he hears Reinhard Bonke preaching and laughs. He says, ah, is that the wise man you were talking about? What is this one? He says, they said, Baba is about to pray for the sick. Oh, no, no, mind those people. And his kind of case is what is being called. And they are being healed. And Reinhard Bonke will go back. And the proud man who does not understand authority sits down there. Look, the way we have cheated ourselves because of ignorance of the systems of God. Cheap victories that have been complicated through ignorance. Look at students here. You heard the testimony of one of our ladies last week. No school fees, no nothing. And then result comes out and you are graduated. Ha <laughs> ba. There are some of us where our lives are the way it is because there is no excellence to anything we do. We are born again, but everything is mediocre. Everything. Everything. Average mediocre. Local champions. I'm a tailor. Like who? Well, I'm, I'm here. I'm patching here and there. I, Lord, I need increase. And God says, increase your capacity. Be excellent. Be excellent. So that you can now start making clothes. When you make a millionaire's clothes, you get a millionaire's reward. When you make clothes for somebody who gives you 500 today, 200 tomorrow, 800 today to pay 3,000, and you are arguing as if, arguing and arguing and fight and forgive the person, but you still suffer. You get tired and say, Lord, I've started, I've left this level. I've challenged us who has been excellent. Hallelujah excellent 
Some of us relationships. This is the mystery we are not engaging. We know it, but we are not engaging it. Hallelujah. Relationships. Honorable is here. Um, I, I don't mean to embarrass him, but this man of God that you see, forget that he's a politician. I told you politicians are my friends. I'm intentionally friends with politicians because whoever controls power controls what happens. I'm not one of these, these foolish people that throw away politicians away. They are my friends. They are my friends. They are my friends. Yes. They are my friends. Hallelujah. Jezebel wanted to destroy the people in the land of Elijah. The first thing she did was to marry the king. To make sure she was at the seat of governance. Then she now pushed her up and said, oh yeah, wait, I'm the one in charge. See that? A true apostolic grace must be able to minister the life and the power of God even at the level of governance. I went for Mubi Crusade. An honorable is here. Do you know, brothers and sisters, this man, as great as he is with his status and all of this, he came for the crusade with his wife, stayed like two days together, and returned back. When I go to Yola, sometimes with his own car, carries me in his own Jeep and drives around. Praise the Lord. Relationship. If he calls me and says his wife is having a headache, and you call me. <laughs> there, there were calls. But let me show you how I will respond. Relationship. That's what brought Dorcas back to life. When Dorcas died, she was a woman who, while she said, I can't preach, but I can sew. Madam, you are cold. Let me make sweater for you. When she died, the widow said, no way. These wicked men, they are all preachers, but they don't take care of us. You better raise this woman back to life for our sake. Hallelujah. Tomorrow, if he becomes a governor, I'm still his friend. Is that true? Yes. Access. That's why when he comes like this, we honor him. What is all this? Everybody is equal before God. It is true based on your understanding. System that we do not know that destroys us and rubbishes our lives because we do not know. Are we together? Yes. Relationships. I told you the easiest way to rise in life is relationships. Everything money can pay for, relationships can pay for it. If you use money to pay for everything in life, you are not wise. There are things relationships should pay for. You can't pay for the house, but a relationship can give it to you. I, I spent time um, the week before last to talk extensively on relationships. I'm not going to go back, but please listen to that message. I can spend my time talking to you about relationship. That's what happened. John the Baptist had the privilege. His mother, listen, John the Baptist did not study what happened around his birth. When Mary received the prophecy of the angel, she knew it was a strange thing. She had to search for another woman who had a strange experience like her. To be able to relate with her and she found out she had the gist of elizabeth and how john came and when they met their babies left when john was born he was older than jesus six months of course at the wilderness there when he met jesus for a while he was walking with jesus but offense came in because some of Jesus' disciples left and became his disciple. And he left and then he now went trying to look for relevance. He went and started lambasting Herod. Because he did not know the protocol of the palace. He thought that the palace is the same thing as the wilderness. The way you speak in the wilderness is not how you speak in the palace. There are principles, all preachers, that rubbish themselves in high places. And they call it speaking for Christ. There is the wisdom and intelligence. When Paul was in the Jerusalem council with the Sanhedrin, he spoke as a Pharisee. 
He said, look, 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 look. I can speak as this and that, but look, now, there are Pharisees, Sadducees. Let me bring a point of divide. I'm speaking based on my authority. I'm a Pharisee. Spoke about the resurrection and that place caught fire. Relationships. Many of our parents today know too many people to be looking for house at their age. Is that true? They didn't raise anybody. They didn't lift anybody. All their friends are successful people. They watch television and tell you, this guy was my friend. Do you know that uh, General Buhari was my classmate? Do you know this one was my classmate? Do you know that Kofi Annan, we drank tea together? Oh God, why have you not been there? What has that relationship done for you? This is why when we do things in church, like turn to one another and give them a nice hug and you are frowning. The, this investment you are making now of rejecting people will be waiting for you in the future. You will see the person you frowned at in power and glory. And now you will not have the same access again. It is cheaper now than later. You've heard me say we will all be great. But the greater part is that we will all know ourselves. That's the most important part. So that what I do not have a Jimmy can give me at a platter of gold. Hardship. Because there is no relationship. Hardship. Because there is no relationship. As a ministry by the grace of God, God has helped us to enjoy certain privileges with people, with institutions, because of relationships. What have you refused to engage that is punishing you and is destroying you what have you refused what do you know and have been wishing will work for you but you have not engaged it truly hallelujah it's one of the things i respect a lot about my dad my dad understands relationships in a strange way he knows almost anybody everywhere if he's a policeman he will scroll down there has to be one policeman he gave bag of rice some years before if it is prisons if it is customs if he's a carpenter even if he's a truck he does not have that stops he knows a mechanic somewhere he knows the one that fixes Peugeot he knows the ones that fixes these relationships now it's costly that's a very busy life but it's only busy until the day you need those people one call and they tell someone else, yes, sir. But another, you keep knocking forever. And you say, God, help me. God, I helped you since. You misuse the opportunity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What have you been paying for that relationships would have paid if you engage them? How long will you continue hating people and talking about them? As though you are going to live in this world alone how long are you ready to continue holding grudges when will you forbear and excel there are ladies over my dead body my mother i will never talk to her but the blessing in your destiny is in the mouth of that woman justified she did something wrong but can you ignore everything so that you step into another dimension hallelujah I'm passionate about engaging the word. I am passionate. I studied the life of Job because I want to be very prosperous. And I studied his life. I saw things that Job did. That if Job died poor, God would have been a wicked person. I found treasures. I said, ah, this is what Job did. Not the obvious things we see. There were things that Job did. What are you doing? Some of us, these are little children. They never look at you and smile. They look at you and they are afraid. You call them children. Remember, you are not going to die young. You have received the anointing for long life. The children you laugh at today, you are only 10 years older than them or 20 years or 30 years. They will soon grow and become adults too and occupy positions of influence. And you will see that a mistake you did 30 years ago will haunt you and your children and children's children. 
is God giving us wisdom? These, these are the systems that we, these are these are these are success systems. These are success systems. I'm I'm challenging us. This engaging part is what came in my spirit today to talk to us about. Engage the word. Engage the word. Engage the mysteries you know and stay there. Stay there till it produces. Don't engage once and complain. Do you know there was a time in my life I did everything but there was no result? Everything to be done, I cross-checked and it was correct. Once you have done everything, leave God's part to him. So when people are complaining and say, Apostle, what am I missing? I say, you are not missing anything. Just stay there. Just like that? Yes, sir. Stay there. God is watching your growth. And he knows that if those blessings come, you don't have the spiritual capacity to take it yet. So he keeps you. And then overnight, you wake up and step into a dramatic dimension of the anointing. And they say, where did he come from? He's always been there waiting. I've been sowing seeds. Continue. Says not to be weary in well-doing. For we will reap in due season. There is a due season if you fail not. If you fail, the due season will come and pass. And you will not see anything. I will never stop sowing seeds. I will sow like a madman until the day the harvest comes. I will never stop engaging my passion for God. I will never stop building capacity. I will respect every man of God and every authority that is producing the results that I'm not producing. Never will I open my mouth to talk about somebody who is producing results that I'm not producing. It's pride of the highest order no matter how simple and how cheap they sound they are engaging something that is producing my results i have a meeting next year and god has granted me the privilege and i'll have the privilege to be meeting with i think maybe for the first time in my life one of the billionaires in the world in Nigeria, I look forward to that meeting. I'm preparing for it like I'm writing jam. He said, I, I, Apostle, for what? This dishonor we carry is why we never rise. If I sit down with a billionaire and he talks to me for five minutes, I will go down my knees and say, Thank you, sir. Because it will change my ignorant mind for God's sake and deliver me from the things that have pegged me and my lineage at certain levels i look forward to that meeting i've been praying and fasting about it i say lord this meeting cannot be once we have to be friends we have to be what yes because a friend sticks close to, than a brother this brother sister thing friends Hallelujah. I know we think it doesn't matter what I just said. Look at our lives. Look at our families. Are you not seeing the rules we have broken for ages? God is faithful. Our lack of understanding his system is what is punishing us. Apostle, why are you teaching all this? So you can serve God. Let my people release them from this pain so that they will go and serve me. I want they are for as long as they are working in the farms for as long as they are suffering in Egypt they can't serve me say let my people go so that they will do what it is my desire to see some of our brothers a few years from now that when others get up in the morning and are running helter skelter you are there with your family you made a way that's the worship song playing. When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made a way And visitors come to your house Discussing survival And you are discussing kingdom We have allocated 10 million to this ministry There is a mission agency We heard that these people are passionate about souls and they say, are you a pastor? He said, no, I'm just a brother in church. I have been trained that my entire life is about the kingdom. He said, are you, you, 
you better stand up and make ends meet. A looter continue. I say, no, not in this house. We have demarcated this house through understanding, exempted forever from certain things. Someone comes to your house and say, what's that noise I'm hearing? Say, we have a vigil today. Say, ah, which prophet is coming? Say, no, priesthood, our house, we have vigils. Say, are you not aware that uh, you have to rush? Say, no, 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 God is faithful. God is faithful. And you are praying. And they say, what are you praying for? Souls. Say, ah, what about, uh, what about ends to meet? Say, ah, God, God, as we settled that long ago. This is, in this house, it is kingdom. Do you think this is possible, what I'm saying? You better believe it. Otherwise, you will be another angry person. This is what I want my life to be all about. Let no one deceive you that your whole life should be spent looking for money. Then serving God small on the way. It's a curse. Did you hear what I said? It's a curse. You can live a happy life where you sit down and teach your children by yourself because you have time. Junior, come. Daddy is about to teach you how to tithe. Have your envelope. Have your own. You put your own one million dollars. The young boy puts his own hundred dollars there. He's learning how to tithe. Daddy, what do we do with this? Son, this is called the law of open heaven. Say after me. And he murmurs whatever he says, but he's learning. By the time that child is 10, he's a millionaire by himself without your influence. And one day he says, Daddy, I was sleeping and I had a voice. And the Lord told me to donate half of my wealth to a mission agency. He says, son, do it fast. Because his father has understanding. Do it fast. Daddy, I thought I was going to become a doctor. But I had a voice in the night saying I'll be a great man of God. Don't worry, you are covered. Not this morning ceremony. Says, so you are going to the vineyard now. Who is the sponsor? No, that's, that's the mindset they carry about preachers. The moment you say you are preaching, people just look at you and they, they have a valedictory service for you into a life of pain. No, sir. Hallelujah. One day you get up and carry your family. Where are you going to? We are going for a Hillsong conference in Australia. You mean it? Yes. Yes, sir. We are going there and we are sitting down. He said, you mean this is how your whole life? He said, this is how it is, oh. I don't know about you i so thank god i'm a man because you can design the life the way ladies don't feel bad just just pray that's that's it i will never spend my life bowing to the statue of nebuchadnezzar no sir no sir hmm. how can i call on your name and end up in shame no way no way how can i bow down before you and then bow down before a man no way because you are my god Men may not believe it. They think we are jokers. But you are my God. You are, you are, you are, you are. You are my God. Romans chapter 8 and verse 8. Take me round up. It says, for I record that the sufferings of this present time brothers and sisters i am not unaware of the pain you are going through i'm not a fool i know that there are constraints there are pains that you are going through but my bible greater than any constitution of any republic the bible says for i know i reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory doxa that shall be revealed the weightiness of God in us in us the Bible says for the earnest expectation of your family of your lineage not just of creation listen some of you are listening to me 
and the devil is telling you don't mind that man it has never been done in your lineage go and study it and god says you are the one i'm raising you. i'm raising you to make a spectacle to principalities and powers that causes can be subdued that yokes can be broken listen god is looking for men that he's looking for a generation he said this is the generation that seeks thee let me tell you there is a generation that will seek god as a vocation not now there are individuals there are churches but there will come a generation an age range where what they do is to seek god church services every day every day not just on sunday as one convention is finishing another one is starting and you can attend it because you have conquered the forces that keep men busy bowing down to the status of nebuchadnezzar what to eat what to wear that's what drives people to walk in the morning you are supposed to walk but the purpose is not just make your ends meet it's a revelation of the glory of the father disabuse your thinking from this servitude mentality god wants to raise us but it will happen by engaging his systems lift your voice and begin to pray lord i exempt myself I exempt myself. I exempt myself. I exempt myself. I exempt myself. Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. There is a generation that will serve God. There is a generation that will seek the God of Jacob. Not seeking money. Not seeking power. We will conquer wealth. We will conquer all the things that distract men so that the only time that will be left is in advancing the course of the kingdom and improving the living of men. Pray! Listen, I look forward to times where our doctors will set up hospitals that are 10 times the size of Shika and everybody who comes half the price was already covered by a kingdom financier yes sir for a hospital not a church not a church you meet someone and there is a surgery happening that person is about dying because they don't have money here comes a kingdom financier what did you say is happening I love God and I love his creation too much Please treat the person. Listen. Let me tell you this. Please don't ever think I'm just making noise. This is prophecy. It will happen. You, you, you may throw yourself out, but it will happen. Hallelujah. A time in the history of the church where there are men who walk to reveal the glory of God. They are so blessed they don't discuss money again. Hallelujah. I heard about the net worth of one very funny person like that and the thing pained me because I read an article about a church that was building their cathedral and the amount was so meager. They borrowed loan from a bank and the bank was harassing them, harassing the pastor. They wrote all kinds of things and insulted the man. And they said the man plunged into depression and died. I think it was last week or week before last. When I had that thing, it pained me. I said, in the vision, God showed this guy death was not part of it all. It was something that killed this man. Yet there is someone answering the kingdom of darkness and has more than 100 times what that church is praying for. Please, don't tell me that is the will of God. Get up in the morning. You are doing this job today. You are doing this one tomorrow. God calls you and says, sorry God, I have to pay my child's school fees. No, sir. Some of our parents may not have gotten it right. We don't have to mock them. But you have to stand and say, Lord, for the sake of my children, I will pay this price. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I pay the price. If my father, if my mother knew better, they would do better. But now that I know this, oh God, I will pay the price. I will pay the price. Lift your voice, I will pay the price. No joking with my life. I will pay the price. 
I will pay the price. Lift your voice and pray. Engaging the systems of the kingdom. Not only believing them. Not only having access to them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to lift your voice and cry that the spirit of disobedience, the spirit of spiritual laziness that does not allow you engage the word, you just keep wishing, no, no, sir, no, ma. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, the grace to put the word to work. Lord, I confess I've not been a faithful title. Pray. I, I stop playing games with my destiny tonight. Lord, I confess my prayer life has gone down. My word life has gone down. Lord, I confess I'm not serious with my destiny. As a gentleman, God has called me into ministry, but I'm not giving it the attention it requires. They are admiring people, fighting people, gossiping, and trying to make a name for myself. I settle down with destiny. 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 Zakato koto pakata kate kapa kato shika. Zapres koto sebo sabaro kato si. Hallelujah. Listen, let me give you a little assignment. When you go back home tonight, I want you to write specific goals, things you are doing. This issue of doing everything, mm -mm. I'm on a mission to rising financially. I'm on a mission to knowing God. I'm on a mission to accessing the healing anointing. Don't just study randomly and move. No, write things. The Lord is calling me into ministry. And he told me the ministry is starting February next year. But from now till February, I am engaging this. I need to know the mystery behind speed. I need to know what keeps members. You write it and sit down. I've, I've not been faithful in tithing. That means I've not had a revelation about it. The issue is not just to carry money and start running. The issue is to sit down and say, this month, I'm going to take a course. I'm going to take a study on it. Who has written books in this area? And you sit down. Who has done a very comprehensive, balanced, not hungry, manipulative teaching on it? And you study. That's how you grow. You carry your issue of concern, put it before you. Close your eyes to every other thing until that mountain crumbles. Don't leave it. That's how winners work. But all this one of try today, if it's too hard, you turn this direction, you will still meet it there. Stay there and win. Did you hear what I said? Stay there and win. Let me tell you in my little life, I can tell you there is no mountain that is not surmountable. It's a lie. Don't listen to anybody that talks to you like that is not your friend. Don't go near them again. I want you to write a list of the mountains before you. Pray, dance, but sit down. There's got to be a way. There's got to be a way. You read a book. You check something. There's got to be a way. Then you enjoy the beauty of triumph. Brothers and sisters, triumph is sweet when you conquer your challenges. You live as if Satan does not exist. There is such a realm. It is my desire with all my heart, among other things that God will bring, not just this ministry. He has helped in a measure, not just me, but every one of us. Not just to a level of spiritual awakening. I, I'm trusting God for an avalanche of, do you know how you conquer poverty? Like, you put it under your feet. This is what God would do in this ministry and with people. And you watch people serve God. All this obsession for money that runs people to hell. Ladies marrying for money. Brothers doing this. People leaving God for money. All kinds of nonsense. And we can focus on God. Then there will be prayer altars afresh that seek God for him. Not for what he can bring. There will be men and women who can study. There are some of you, there are books locked up in your spirit for nations. But suffering will not let those books come out. Because all you are thinking now is, oh God, let me just look for something to eat. We depress ourselves and have high blood pressure to death. Whereas there is a way 
a noble way where you spend your life at the end of your life like david you say like like um paul you say i have fought the fight good fight i have finished my course you have poured yourself like a drink offering nothing left again yeah now i want to make an altar call gone are the days where people just cajole people you know when people come like this i know many of you have heard of the miracles many of you will experience it god wants us to experience it but let me tell you this i have noticed that most of those who live long are not miracle workers in fact most healing evangelists did not cross 80. yes it's true those who really really enjoyed the grace for longevity are people who are interested in the souls of people hallelujah now nothing wrong with miracles we're going to be experiencing the hand of god shortly but it came strong upon i've been concerned about the fact that there are people who are really going to hell it's not a lie it's true whether you believe it or not it's not the issue i can argue that there's no oxygen in the air it does not stop it there are some of you looking at me right now the overflow the truth of the matter is that at your current state without missing words it is true that it is not heaven you are going to the goal is not to scare you this is not the issue of scaring it is the truth there's nothing to scare you about it is true and books were opened and another book was opened which was the book of life listen carefully whosoever's name it's on earth yet that we celebrate people apostle joshua selman whosoever's name was not found he was not asked why his name was not there if your name was not there that's the end of it are we together listen look this is a very serious serious issue there has to come a time in a man's life when you break your pride and say Jesus I need you I don't care whether you have been a preacher for donkey years I'm not asking you how many sick bodies you healed I'm not asking you what name your members call you are we together there are people outside overflow one two three the truth is there are people who need Jesus Christ and a day is going to come whether we like it or not that day the very judge of the earth is coming it's coming if he said it in his word then it is true mm -hmm. come out and be serious with god be serious with god it's amazing how people come out for altar call they come out for altar call and you see them playing around and you know they are not serious i'm not saying you must cry but there is an attitude of seriousness you don't play games with god are we together i want you to run to jesus like there's fire on the mountain because there really is one two Apostle, I'm ready to break my pride and humble myself. It's not a call to condemnation. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, make your way. I've cried for my own life. My own life as a man of God. I've cried and rolled in the presence of God, crying for my own life. So don't, don't think that this is just some showmanship. Three, make your way. It's not by force. It's not compulsory. You can choose to sit down. Or you can choose to say let tonight be that night lord you have to win this war over my life four the holy spirit is still speaking to people you may have money you may have anointing you may have cars but let me tell you this the bible says if your hope is only in this life you are of all men of all politicians, of all businessmen, of all men of God, miserable. There has to be a cry from your heart. Lord, I need you is a sign of humility. 
Is there someone still joining them? Very quickly, I want to pray. Your coming to Jesus means I am ready to close the door to all the friends and personalities in my life that are not ready to head my direction. Your coming to Jesus is a revelation that Lord, I am ready to be serious with you. It's not just you are coming as a preamble to receiving a miracle and then you run back. No. In plenty and in none, leaving you is no longer an option in my life. Hallelujah. I want to lead you. Some of you are crying. Let me tell you this. If you have any loved one who is not saved, I hope their names are in your prayer request. Because I know that some of us, if I ask you what is on your prayer request now, the only thing is wife, husband, promotion. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. But let me tell you this. It's, it's funny, but from heaven, you will still see your loved ones in hell. You will know they are the ones. It's not that you are going to look at them and say, I don't know, I don't. It's a lie. You will know that this one is my mother. This one. Now, you can't do anything about those who have gone. But there are people now you know in your neighborhood around your life. It is the Lord's desire that all men be saved. Please, if you are a pastor here, take the issue of soul winning seriously. Be careful. All these things we learn around in the name of mentorship. I believe in men. Be careful. Many people are veering off. There is, a, there is a path that brings power and grace. At the end of your life, you don't want to be a wise master builder. Be, be careful. The flamboyant does not necessarily mean God is there. Be careful. Especially for some of us who are younger ministers, we must be wise. You don't just swallow everything hook, line, and sinker just because it is being done. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. There are churches where an altar call is not made for more than two years. Then one day they organize one hilarious, pretentious revival. And then just draw one or two people. It's a joke. It's a joke. More than healing. More than miracles. More than getting a job. More than all of this. Is the eternal destiny of men. I am interested in knowing that I'm not praying for someone going to hell. It's a waste. I'm interested in knowing that I'm not teaching someone a principle to prosper. When he's already gone to hell. It's a waste. I will teach you about the finances and the kingdom life when we know that your eternal destiny is secure. Those of us who are standing, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, just one prayer before I pray for them. Lord, make me serious with you. Make me serious with you. Please pray. It's a very serious prayer. There are some of us, you are not going to hell. But the truth of the matter is you are not serious with God. No. Mm -mm. There's nothing about God that, that can steal your passion. It's not priority. You see people function in the house of God and you say, oh, these ones, it's because they are called into ministry. There's no such thing as that. It's your hunger. Especially for some of us sisters, we have to pray, Lord, make me serious with you. I don't care how many men like you. I don't care what they have told you. If you are not serious with God, your life is in shambles. It's true. Lord, make me serious with you. Let nothing else sustain the ability to take your place in my life. That's a very good prayer. Hallelujah. Come live in me Oh my life Take hold Come live in me and I will rise Hallelujah. You are a 
parent here yeah, when your children get to the age of discretion the moment they can think and they can understand lead them to Jesus consciously it is very responsible lead them to Jesus if you have not done so as you go back home don't just say my children are smart call them preach the gospel to them the moment they, are, they can think they should be born again please be take let nobody stay in your roof you have a neighbor that is squatting with you he's not serious it doesn't matter no it does no it does no it does they can choose to reject jesus that's all right no one goes to hell because he's a sinner everybody goes to hell because he rejected jesus that is the sin that takes men to hell i rejected him i had a choice but i rejected him jesus carry your load and walk out of my life those of you in front here i truly appreciate you whatever you have in this life if jesus is not above it is useless let me just tell you the truth i want to lead you in an honest prayer i know some of you are crying overflow one two three those online please listen i'm not asking you whether you're a business mogul i'm not asking you whether you have how many degrees all those things are useless when you are no longer here i'm going to lead you in an honest prayer and i want you to pray from the depth of your heart listen to what you are saying and pray it loud are you ready now say after me with all your heart passionately lord jesus i love you with all my heart this night i make up my mind and i make a commitment to serve you and to live for you from today till eternity i declare that jesus is lord of my life i declare that my sins are forgiven i declare that the life of god eternal life is mine today holy spirit i receive you as the life of god in my spirit i declare that i'm a child of god forever let me pray for you father i thank you for these ones they have unashamedly come the Bible says that if you are ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my father, Jesus speaking. Lord, these ones have come opening their hearts genuinely to receive of your grace. I ask you, oh God, you who is the helper of us all, help them. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that the righteousness of God is at work in you the grace to live a victorious Christian life the grace for passion and intimacy with God is released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ every pain and every legal access the devil has over your life is hereby broken forever in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen I congratulate every one of you not listen I know that some of you are rededicating your life to Christ there are a number of you those in here i just want you to walk out this way and then the various overflows i know that there are people attending to them they will have your details i praise you very quickly and you return back to join us in the service i salute you thank you so much for your courage your life will never be the same god bless you please direct them make sure someone is directing them make sure someone is directing them hallelujah Amen. Please sit down. Hallelujah. There are two ministries that I believe will be reignited in a fresh dimension. Two very great anointings. I really believe with all my heart and and it's been confirmed from different people seasoned veterans of the gospel 
across the earth number one is the healing ministry i believe that the church has lost a major dimension of the healing ministry it's true even some of us that supposedly walk in it the truth is that most people have not experienced the full import of the healing ministry the healing ministry i'm going to be showing you a few things and then we'll pray we'll get to the business of the night the healing ministry is very important it played a major role the challenge was that most of the healing evangelists got to a point where they were carried away by the healing and no longer christ and his purposes because the healing ministry is a means is a sign that points men to jesus it's possible that because of the charismatism around the healing ministry you can veer off and your whole focus becomes the miraculous and not the christ himself the second ministry that i believe will be experienced is the ministry of wealth and abundance is true this wealth transfer that you've heard people say i believe that god has suspended that dimension for a reason because as a body we are not yet ready for that dimension the our perspectives about kingdom wealth and finance does not warrant god releasing that level of blessings because for many of us our hearts are still corrupt over the idea of money are we together the average person's idea about money is just some kind of um is just a, a quest to get and buy nice clothes and nice cars and prove that i am successful there is a place for that but if that is the scope of your idea then you do not need any wealth transfer are we together yes so god must first walk upon our hearts it's the same way years ago there was a very strange manifestation of a lot of things that happened in zaria angelic feathers gold dust silver dust you know people started having these strange encounters and one i remember one night the lord told me said i'm withdrawing this experience because it's leading to idolatry it didn't reach one month and that experience was withdrawn people will go to pray and for hours all they are doing is checking their hands to see if there's any gold or silver to use it as an evidence to validate spirituality and god said no if i don't take it away one demon will give it an innocent prayer warrior a feather and he will carry it and idolize it in his room until he begins to mislead another group of people and so god withdrew that experience god only releases experiences to people and territories where there is a level of maturity and discernment he knows that when this reality reaches the people they will not abuse it until now as i speak to you there are people who don't understand the purpose of money and it is being abused and so god will not release it until the body is taught the money is safer with bill gates is safer with all of these people than it is with preachers and pastors because they have worked on their minds they are better treasurers for god than us so all it is true that there is a wealth transfer coming but not not some money monger kind of thing it won't come that way anyway i just thought to share that let's look at the ministry of jesus luke chapter 6 i study the gospels a lot because the ministry of jesus inspires me he's the greatest model that i have and i like to i like to study his idea what did he do what was captured in his ministry luke chapter 6 and verse 17 to 19 luke chapter 6 verse 17 to 19 this is jesus now having the sermon on the mount okay i'll just read it from here and he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of the disciples a great multitude of people listen out of all judea and jerusalem and from the sea coast of tyre and sidon who came to hear now listen carefully the people came to hear amplified says to listen to him 
He came to hear him and to be healed. There is a relationship between hearing and being healed. They didn't just come to be healed. They came to hear and to be healed. Verse 18 or still verse 17 to be healed of all their diseases. 18 and they that were vexed with unclean spirits. So we see the kind of people that came for Jesus' meetings. Those who were sick. They were sick. Terribly diseased. They came to listen to him. There was something he taught them about listening to his words. And the healing power of God. So they came to hear and to be healed. The second category of people we see. They that were vexed with unclean spirits. And they were healed. Unclean spirits. The source of their pain and their discomfort were the presence of unclean spirits. And the Bible says, and the whole multitude, listen, sought to touch him. Why? For there went power out of him to heal them. I love the ministry of Jesus. So the Bible tells us why the people got healed. That there was power. Other versions say virtue. There was something that Jesus had that would lead him into the people. And the moment it entered them, they would discover that their sicknesses were gone. Are we together? Hmm. Acts chapter 10, when you read verse 38, Peter was teaching. That was the salvation of the Gentiles in the house of Cornelius. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 with the holy ghost and with power listen it says who went about doing good went about doing good went about doing good so we see other things that jesus did that were not captured he didn't just heal the sick alone he didn't just deliver the oppressed alone he went about doing good breakthrough is a good thing restoration is a good thing he went about doing good and then healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him any ministry that wants to reproduce Jesus's ministry and and by the way I hope you know that what we do today is an extension of his ministry Jesus's ministry did not end with his ascension to heaven are we together now he said, it is expedient that I go. Why? So that the comforter will come. It is to your advantage, advantageous to you that I go. Because my transition will allow the Holy Spirit to come. Like the mantle of Elijah came on Elisha. Now that mantle that was on Jesus, the Spirit himself without measure. So that we can partake of that Spirit and become an extension of his ministry. We are gathered tonight as proof that the ministry of Jesus has not ended. We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still heals. Do you believe that? We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still delivers. We are gathered tonight because we believe he still does good. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as the father had sent me. This is Jesus speaking. The Father sent me. I now send you as the Father sent me. Both in terms of the scope of the assignment and the equipping. The Father sent me with power. And every time I spoke, something left me to validate what he said. He said, so also I sent you. You see, if the power of God does not back up his word, it's fraud. It is the power of God that validates the truth, the potency of God's word. So at some point in this service, we should expect the power of God to find expression. Not just in people, you know, receiving impartations here and they're wonderful. But we expect the power of God to heal the sick. We expect the power of God to cleanse all kinds of unclean people who are cohabiting with demon spirits that are manipulating their lives and manipulating their results at some point in this service we should see the superiority of light over darkness is that true 
at some point in this service god should be able to step over your issue to see that that 10 year long issue just dissolves like this just like that is that true if that happens then we can say with all sense of gratitude that we are an extension of the ministry of jesus but listen to me brothers and sisters if this does not happen we are wasting god's time and we are wasting the time of god's precious people that's why we prepare for all of the meetings especially the miracle service because you have not just come to watch a man you have come to see an extension of the ministry of jesus you have come with your requests you have come with your medical reports you have come with your pain you have come with all kinds of oppression you have come with all kinds of closed heaven and you're saying lord if you are the only one i know who can help me let me tell you your coming is faith enough did you hear what i said you're leaving your house to come is faith enough it's true like a patient goes to the hospital once you are in the hospital just leave the rest to the doctor then the doctor begins to prescribe and this is what is happening to us an extension of the ministry of jesus let's look at one scripture mark chapter 1 21 mark chapter 1 and verse 21 and they went into capernaum still the ministry of jesus and straightway on the sabbath day he entered the synagogue and taught it's interesting how jesus held his crusade he would take out time not just to preach but to teach jesus knew that teaching was the system for sustaining anything that the people were to receive are we together if the entire scope of ministry is just miracles alone it, it becomes volatile the people receive it and then it just evaporates but when they are taught it guides their understanding to keep that which they have received you can lose something you have received it's true you can lose healing demons can leave people and re-enter them again but when the word of god is taught it gives you the basis are we together now so jesus taught in their synagogues we're reading it's, it's a long reading let's see how far we can go just keep just continue and they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes 23 and there was in their synagogue i love jesus see how his miracle service was as soon as he just finished preaching it was time to demonstrate the reality of the kingdom and there was in that service a man with an unclean spirit and the demons began to cry out 24 saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou jesus of nazareth art thou come to destroy us we know who you are the holy one of god and so on and so forth and jesus rebuked him saying hold your peace and come out of him this is jesus for you this is jesus for you because that man's life was obviously in shambles because there was another spirit that was cohabiting with that individual manipulating his intentions and jesus looked at him this does not reflect the kingdom and he brought that spirit out like it's going to happen to many people the forces and the spirits that are responsible for the results we do not want but keep seeing until they leave all these things are a joke when the unclean spirit had turned him he cried out in a loud voice and he came out of him 27 we're reading down to i think it was 39 or so i just want us to walk through the ministry of jesus and they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority he commanded even the unclean spirits and they do obey him let me tell you this when you command an unclean spirit and it goes it is a big deal did you hear what i said <laughs> doctors can treat sickness they can cast out devils machines can show an elongated lung or heart but it cannot show the spirit sitting there are you hearing what i'm saying these spirits are living entities they can hear they have a system and a structure they were designed to respect some people and disobey some people are we together 
they understand ranking in the spirit so when you issue a command as jesus did and these spirits are forced against their will to leave that individual and that habitation is proof of dominion are we together yes it is it truly is proof of dominion look at jesus used this the people were astonished they said our priests and rabbis didn't do this they couldn't do this i hope you know that while all the priests used to preach that man was in the temple and the spirits were hearing but the words were not potent enough to force them to leave so they kept coming service after service may you not be a man of god that cohabits with demons and that people come and sit under your anointing and under your meeting and the demons that cause poverty failure whatever it is you share the grace and they share the grace with you and you go out no sir Haba. what then is the excellency of light over darkness your presence should discomfort the gate of hell so well that there is no pretending about it that's why some of you bring people here. You notice you bring them and when they sit down while praise and worship is happening, they want to run away. It's not them. It's not them. The devil knows that when you come into an environment that can bring you emancipation, Satan will revolt and fight and fight again and again. But tonight the devil is a liar. It's too late. Really, it's too late. 28 and immediately his fame spread abroad all through the region round about galilee and forthwith when they were come out of the synagogue they entered into the house of simon and andrew with james and john let's see what happened and simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever and anon they tell him of her now jesus is healing we saw him cast out devils He's about to heal now. And he came and took her by the hand. I love Jesus. And lifted her up. And how, may, how long? Immediately. Immediately. Do you know if Jesus did not touch her, she would remain like that. And you would think it's the will of God. Don't trivialize an anointed hand. Goodness. Jesus walks in and says, I'm introducing something to this woman's body. That until the arrival of that thing, the condition does not change. That contact... The Bible says immediately the fever did what? That means the fever was a living thing. It could move. Abba, is it, are you not intelligent people? The fever left. Pastor Alpha left me. Before Jesus came, the fever was with her. They gave it all kinds of interpretation. Jesus, look at what Jesus did. He didn't talk. He just touched the Bible didn't say they shall lay hands on the sick and speak. Just by making contact alone. Are you seeing that now? Some, it was about the transference of virtue. And it forced the spirit. There was a separation. That means the discomfort you feel is because there is something with you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. That means that growth, that swelling... Is a sign that there is something with you. Ah, but the hands of Jesus extended through us. You see that? I, I'm, I'm creating expectation in you. That means that pile would never have been piled until a spirit came in partnership with your body. And just saying pile go is not what will, will make it go. There is an agency that will separate you from that pile. You will call it a miracle. There is no reason to remain sick when the spirit has been separated. Look at it. Immediately, not slowly. So the question is not whether you can be healed. The question is whether the anointing is sufficient to separate that spirit. Because when it happens, the Bible says immediately. And she was so healed, she went straight to the kitchen. Straight to the kitchen from a bed. And he came and took her by the hand and brought unto him all that were there at even when the sun did set. Like Koinonia now, they brought unto him. That means there was an information that had reached town. 
that when we bring certain people to this man, there was something about him that was able to heal them. They brought unto him all that were what? Diseased. And them that were possessed with devils. See the kind of people that came to Jesus. As a man of God, if these kinds of people are not coming to you, it's not the issue of I'm not called into this ministry. Something is wrong. Because they should discern that the hand of God upon your life should function in a pattern similar to that of Jesus and should make them bring certain people. There are, there are creative dimensions that his anointing can bring. Creation is needed when there is no possibility of having that reality again. Then you create it. Not everyone may be sick, but let me tell you something. Everyone needs the hand of God. There are some of us, our heavens are closed totally. And don't act as if it's not important. Nobody is favoring you. No open door. You are born again, but your life and your door and destiny is closed. Can you trust God to open this door for you? It's not by might. It's not by power. You heard the testimony of, of uh, Joy. She said an uncle who does not even call her. Something made that uncle call, brothers and sisters. Because that uncle also has relatives somewhere. Everybody who blesses you has someone in need around him. What makes him to leave them and come to you? No. Are we blessed? One question I'll ask you and then we'll begin to pray. Are you truly tired of the situation? You see, there's something I think I was sharing with. I can't remember who I was sharing this with. I was saying pain. It was you, Jimmy. Pain is very important. Sometimes the only way to let people see your is allow that pain. Don't stop it. Because there are people, if you have not been pushed to the wall, you will not see the need for God. For as long as there is somebody answering your prayer for you, you will not see the need to be serious. So sometimes God deliberately allows it. And that pain the day five of your children said daddy is this how we'll continue you just get up and say i'm coming for koinonia today I'm, I'm tired of this that pain was an indication that something is wrong and that it needs remedy fast pain there are people who will never run and come to god but you just press one side of your stomach and you just feel ah something is growing what is this next week the thing increased you told a doctor, just touch it and say, ah, I don't want to tell you the name. Pain. Just say, when is that miracle service said? The power of God is real. It can produce miracles. It will produce miracles in your life. Tonight. Do you believe it? I expect that not only would God heal the sick, not only will he cast out devils listen carefully i expect that tonight by his spirit he will lift you out of certain captivities lack of favor delay there are some of us who are trusting god to return certain things that left your life for years whoever told you it cannot you heard the lady that said they stole her phone they came with matchet and stole her phone i remember she sent me a text that they came to carry a machete. Foolish thieves. They don't know that a body without a spirit is dead. The same way you have been carrying a certificate. That's the body. Where is the spirit component? That's why you drop it on a table and they throw it in a dustbin. But when the spirit component comes, let me tell you this. God never designed a man to do anything on earth unassisted. A spirit entity must assist you. Even you, if you meet a herbalist, that herbalist is not alone. There is a spirit assisting him. You see that? Yes. Don't walk through life by your strength and power. Please help them life will be too hard for you this is the mystery of hardship rejecting the assistance of the spirit i would dare not do ministry without the spirit what else will i be doing 
but with God with God all things without him you are on your own but when you involve him and not only involve him go a step further by letting him lead the way then your life becomes a wonder I'm showing you many of you are surprised the same surprise was in the Bible they were astonished what manner of man is this astonished and then the man if he's wise will tell you look I'm not alone Jesus said I'm not alone all these miracles you see I'm being assisted brothers and sisters the result you see in this ministry is a product of assistance the realm of the spirit is in partnership you can't be standing here and someone is shouting outside shouting at overflow no no Abba. words are not hammer but when the spirit is upon them that word will enter you like a drug and all of a sudden you will find out that certain things will go <laughs> it will work in Zaria it will work in Lagos it will work in London it will work in Saudi Arabia it will work everywhere are we together the spirits that oppress us must give way I'm, gi I'm taking out time to charge your heart like this because I want you to receive the most important thing is not the ministrations as it were the most important thing is creating this expectation many of us come and we are just hoping um, okay God I know you will bless me in the name of Jesus may God lift you amen I just, well, it was a nice service and you go back and nothing happens you keep watching people come to testify blessed is she that believes the Bible says for unto her not unto them there shall be a performance hallelujah I believe the Lord I came here full of the Holy Ghost and I came here believing with all my heart you are sick get ready to be healed don't 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 say well let's watch and see get ready to be healed you are oppressed of the devil you may not even know you're oppressed you just know that nothing is working in your life I want you to be tired and say God will you bring me here so especially for those of you who came so far Lord will you carry me and bring me here and take me back like that there are some of you in ministry you came to contact fire Lord will you leave me will I leave my members my fellowship and come back here and go back no evidence of favor I believe him I believe that he's a mighty man I believe he's awesome I have seen his hand I have seen his power and ladies and gentlemen I present to you the same God yesterday today forever I present to you the same healer yesterday today forever I present to you the same deliverer I present to you the one who took Joseph from the prison overnight I present to you the one who turned Saul to the apostle I present to you the one who turned Rahab to be part of the genealogy of Jesus I present to you your destiny changer I present to you your destiny maker I present to you the anointer of men the one who puts oil upon the head of ordinary people and changes their life I present to you the prosperer the one who can program a climate of favor over a man as though you are holding a child. I present to you the one who can give you influence, can lift you from nothing and make your life a wonder, a specimen, an epistle of his hand. That's the God I present to you. I have given a very nice speech we're about to step back and allow the king of glory ride over this place and let me watch the mountain that stands before him let me watch Zerubbabel oh no no he said who art thou mountain who art thou mountain who art thou infirmity who art thou delay who art thou stagnation before Zerubbabel he said before Zerubbabel thou shalt be made plain
Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. The Lord is starting tonight with an impartation. There is an impartation of the grace for favor. This is what the Lord is telling me. The grace for favor. The grace I'm about to pray for favor. Favor is a revelation that God has given me. My life is a testimony of that reality. I want to pray for you now. Believe. Believe as I pray. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare right now. Father. Even as you have revealed to me. From this main auditorium. To overflow one. Overflow two. Overflow three. And those online. Lord I release an impartation. For the grace for favor. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. I stretch my right hand. And I decree and declare. Step into a new level of favor. 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 We need favor in our lives. Most of the things we pray about are under the office of favor to solve. I say it again. In the name of Jesus, every challenge in your life that only the favor of God can solve, I stand before the God who has helped me and has helped this ministry. I release upon you an oil of favor. Take it now. In the name of Jesus, take favor. Take favor. Receive favor in the name of Jesus Christ. A strange dimension of favor. Favor that will surprise you. Favor that will accelerate your life. When a life, listen to me, when a life has no favor, it is clear. The proof of lack of favor is the absence of helpers in your life. Not the absence of money. You can have money. You can have intellect. You can have a job. But when there are no men in your life, you don't have favor. The proof of favor is not the coming of money. The proof of favor is the rapid response from men to attend to the issues of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that the men that must show up in your life to validate the grace for favor, I prophesy them upon you now. I call them by prophecy in the name of Jesus upon your business, upon your job, upon your projects. May men arise to help you. Hallelujah. There is the grace for favor. Those of you who are on the social media may have heard of a testimony that had been trending for a while. I traveled to Lagos last week and just when we got down from the aircraft on my way going, listen carefully, something is happening here. A young man just walked to me and held me and I looked at him and he said, sir, remember me. I said, well, I don't remember you. What's the story? He came here, Koinonia, with a property, his property, and carried it and gave me as a seed. I said, what for? I mean, you're a young man. What will you go and tell your wife? Brothers and sisters, from November till now, nine properties and one estate came to him. A young guy. Abba. Is it charm? What is on you is what brings things to your life. It's not what you want. It is what is on you. In the name of Jesus, 
that anointing that must come on you I declare that it comes on your head right now it comes upon your head right now producing strange results it comes upon your head right now it comes upon your head right now just follow me some of you don't know how you need favor you know you need favor but you don't know what extent I can't imagine that there are human beings that live on this earth without favor you will never be able to be happy on earth no I can you check let's check our lives the truth is for many of us there is no favor it's not that the helpers are not there there has to be something on you to bring them every lifting that God has brought by his grace happened in this Zaria not London Zaria here many of us live unrewarded lives because there is nothing on you drawing men to bless you nobody thinks about you God does not talk to anybody about you a gentleman I think one of these uh, I can't remember one of these Fridays and he stood to see me after the service and he said man of God my life is hard can you help me with some money and I looked at him I said you are not a wise gentleman I know you need money now but you should ask yourself the person giving you the money where did it come from the wiser prayer is for favor I said let's do an experiment I told him I said I will pray for you for favor return next Friday and tell me what happened if nothing happens I will give you money agreed he said yes and I prayed for him and he went brothers and sisters on Monday Monday that's the Monday after that gentleman sent me a text and he said his uncle that he's even fighting with their father that he did a very serious transfer and told him that who helps you in school and he said nobody he said so why have you not been reaching me all of you these proud children and so on and so forth that he was going to start sending him money i said you you believe that that uncle just did it by his will listen this world is too wicked for somebody to just like you that's flattery this wicked world where a man can slaughter a child's head then what makes you believe they will just like you enough to see that you rise it takes favor can I pray that prayer for you again in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God you have done your best you have done your efforts you have struggled it's almost killing you now receive the grace for favor receive the grace for favor may your life change by favor receive the grace for favor hallelujah it is favor that brings resources it is favor that brings opportunity there are many gifted people there's no one to reward them there are many nice people many wonderful musicians nobody to place a demand on their grace it's so annoying when you see someone you are better than but he has favor and you don't and yet you have to say yes sir her man did not think Mordecai was good enough but favor and he said everywhere you see the chariots of Mordecai bow the knee Mordecai is passing yes a gatekeeper you may not like a person but when favor is on them it will veto whatever you think I pray for you again every door that must open in this season to validate favor I command it to be open now I command it to be open now listen you're not going to build a house by savings let me tell you the truth it's not in today's Nigeria you're not going to buy a car by saving no I practice all these things you're not going to to settle and train your children just by saving money you will need a grace 
that can accelerate your results otherwise you will never be a giver you will never you can't be a giver just by saving peanuts 10 naira and 100 naira when there is a demand life will demand so much from you that if you are not operating under favor you will be frustrated and that's how satan wants to trap men he would trap you and make your life miserable let's release this favor on our families you have received it for yourself but let it get to your family i pray for you in the name of jesus christ my father every family that is represented here by the anointing of the holy spirit let there be a release of favor let there be a release of favor favor on every family favor on every family listen sometimes eh, it is not warfare that destroys it is even how favor works favor can kill to make sure that one person rises some of these proud relatives that make fraternities with darkness and sit upon the destinies of families and make ghosts and say for as long as we are there you must route your success through us if you attempt to rise without us you will not rise i declare that the sword of favor may it get to every family and dislodge everybody who wants to be god in that family hallelujah favor in one minute i want you to begin to mention all the areas you want to see favor and speak lift your voice begin to pray begin to pray participate lord i release favor concerning this job pray i release favor i release favor favor concerning my building project like a shield you surround us with favor like a shield pray make sure you are praying in the name of Jesus favor like a shield favor in my academics pray favor over my job Lord favor 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 hallelujah listen let me tell you the truth you see ba this prayer you are praying if this prayer is truly answered in your life this is how you will stand what is this this favor prayer you see there are people who have touched up this favor they can tell you favor is fearful in its operation of Saul that I may show him kindness and they carried a crippled man I don't deserve the palace he says still come and the king said you will sit here and eat with me let me tell you how you know it is favor listen favor is not one time when somebody just says hey, Jimmy, I want to give you water what that's just goodness favor is I want to keep blessing you I want to continue doing this many of us what happens is that we mistaken goodness for favor someone just appear once and just says look i want to help you and it never happens again when it is favor a process is ignited it keeps following like that it's true study the things in your life you'll be able to separate goodness from favor there are things that just happen one time but favor favor continues so I'm seeing fire on my hands and I want to pray because the Lord wants to bless the works of our hands listen whether you are on a job or whatever it is you see these hands you see they are 
is a mystery it says the the hand of god it was with this hand god made man are we together now this hand you see is a symbol of your productivity and if it is not blessed it will bring struggle to you i want to pray i'm, I'm seeing fire on my hands and i want to pray because for many of us who are getting results but our results are too small i stretch these hands the fire that the lord put upon this hand in the name of jesus i release it let it come upon your hands let it come upon your hands representing your job your academics your business whatever it is that you're involved in i release i stretch my hands may that may that fire come upon you in the name of jesus christ you go back with that hand and write a proposal and it will shock you what will happen you go back with that hand listen listen believe this and pick up a document and submit and someone collects it and is under the influence of what your hand brought it's true it's true why does god do these things to give us rest so we can serve him why does god open doors to give you rest financial frustration and all kinds of related frustrations are strategies from satan to distract you and make you to keep seeking things you never will truly be able to seek god when certain things have not been solved in your life it's true you can't give god your best when you are still thinking of what to eat you are thinking of what to wear but when God takes those things away, your prayer life becomes worship, not just hours of petition in the flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Overflow 2. There's someone, the anointing of the Spirit is coming on someone. Overflow 2. The overflow by the roadside. Bring the lady. Hello, him, Adonai. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Overflow to the overflow by the road. Please, quickly. We have to hurry up. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hello, him, Adonai. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Can I talk to you, madam? This woman, please tap her for me. Come. Hello, him there is a spirit that doesn't want this woman to rise. Hello, him Thy kingdom come, thy will be. The Lord is opening the eyes of your parents. I'm seeing the Lord opening their eyes to a realization of something the devil has been using. In the name of Jesus, especially for this lady, I command it so now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that every conspiracy of darkness over you and your family is hereby crushed to pieces. In the name of Jesus. Madam, I don't know who you are, but let me pray for you. There is a spirit. I look at you and I see a woman who should be walking in certain realms of favor. You love the Lord, but this is like, it's like a trap. You just cannot move and make progress. And the Lord is saying, I should pray for you. As I pray for you, madam, you will be surprised to see what happens in your life. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. 
in the name of Jesus Christ I release this woman right now in the name of Jesus Christ I release this woman the devil has put something in this lady's stomach this lady you are holding I command in the name of Jesus remove that evil you have put now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm about to pray and I'm already seeing a vision of what will happen there will be such a massive 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 deliverance now let it not surprise you I've explained to you what this thing is it's a separation you should rejoice when it happens because it means that you are entering a new season a new season a new season a new season
I decree and declare that every force sitting on your destiny as you count three as you count Jesus at the count of three let there be deliverance one two three let them go now let them go now witchcraft manipulations of darkness in the name of Jesus I command a separation through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit I decree I set it as an ordinance in the spirit I announce liberty liberty bring them out Jesus Christ if there is any family that has been covenanted to any elements of the supernatural whether the earth whether fire that people pass through fire to make ordinances at the count of three I command those ordinances set on fire one two three let there be liberation right now every family Covenanted to the waters, covenanted to the air, to trees. I set you free now. map and I'm seeing or your state or your state this is the hand of God the sword of the spirit going to or your state bringing deliverance there are times that God moves this way in the name of Jesus I command whoever is from that region may the power of God begin to touch you now may the power of God begin to touch you now complete liberty complete liberty Overflow three, please lift your hands. Just watch your screen and lift your hands. Overflow three. Don't worry, you you that you you don't have to bring them. The distance is far. Overflow three. Just look at me. I see the angels of the Lord doing something there. At the count of three, overflow three. I want you to shout the name Jesus because I'm seeing swords. That's what I'm seeing, and the Lord is bringing a massive, massive breakthrough, massive deliverance. In the name of the Lord Jesus, overflow three, are you ready? I'm seeing chains of stagnation about to leave you. Right now in the name of Jesus, everyone under any kind of oppression, at the count of three, shout Jesus. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for the sick shortly. Hold on guys. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Please, I want to pray. The Lord is showing me something that is very interesting. The Lord wants to break cycles. There are people every season certain things happen. Every September somebody must die. 
every three three years somebody married must divorce in the name of jesus lift your hands you don't have to ask whether or not you are involved don't worry the anointing will look for you i decree and declare right now in the name of jesus the power that activates cycles demonic cycles over the lives of people so that certain patterns and events keep repeating themselves in the name of jesus i stretch my hands call that lady back that lady lift your hands my dear god is not done with you i look at you and i see oppression there is something that the devil has put in you if i don't pray for you very soon they will start telling you you will start feeling pain they will say fibroid in the name of jesus i stretch my hands i command that devil let her go now in the name of jesus christ every cycle over anyone's life are you ready to shout jesus now at the count of three to surprise you what god will do one two get ready three the chain of circles be broken cycles cycles of failure cycles of miscarriages cycles of unfruitfulness by the sound of the spirit be broken now hallelujah be broken now I want to pray um please this man I don't know who the this man yes please quickly we are soon going to pray for the sick I may not have time to prophesy to individuals I'm standing near this lady and I'm seeing a snake this is what I see in the name of Jesus I curse that devil I'm not seeing a human being I'm seeing a snake in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ overflow one I'm seeing the power of God this I just mentioned snake and I was seeing serpents just moving at overflow one right now I'm seeing it's like a sword dividing those snakes that's what I'm seeing it's happening to people at overflow one in the name of Jesus let it be over now snakes and scorpions the mystery the mystery of snakes and scorpions he said I give you authority over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy sir I want to pray for you I don't know whether you came here for us you have been but, coming here uh, but I was tra I traveled before that so I have not been coming I want to pray for you yes, sir. if I don't pray for you the devil is going to kill you I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you inside a coffin they have already closed you I'm not a prophet of doom I want to pray for you you love Jesus be careful so that they don't bring these herbal things for you huh? yes, uh, is that true yes, sir. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing them bring something for you to yes. help you yes, sir. that thing is a charm yes, it's sir. not half it's charm yes. native yes. doctor yes, sir. Huh? Yes, that's sir. what will even kill you yes, sir. it's not going to solve your problem yes, sir. the people doing it are well meaning yes, sir. but the truth is that they are going to kill you for nothing yes, sir. Yes, sir. thank you sir because you are not even responding to it the way they say you should respond to it yes, and you violate it will destroy you yes, sir. can I pray for you you have you have taken something in your system now that will even destroy you listen let me tell you when you are pressed we are humans and we can be pressed to the wall going to the devil to get a charm is, is you are facilitating your destruction if Satan gives you tea here he will hold a knife and stab you at the back father by the mercy of god i pray for this man let him not die in the name of jesus i close the gate of the grave over your life in the name of jesus both the herbalist and the conveyor of those charms in the name of jesus we scatter that shrine into pieces in the name of jesus christ i pray for you sir the lord perfects you in Jesus name I pray something is leaving this lady oh dear she's vomiting I'm looking at her and I'm seeing something Agnes God is not done with that guy or that young man with blue
Agnes, if you are not Agnes, don't come here, please. Your name is Agnes. Where are you from? I need to pray for you. I'm seeing an attack on your life. This attack is coming from Calabar. Huh? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sir. I have to pray for you. Where are you from? Cross River. You are from Cross River? Yes, sir. Come. I must pray for you. Kai. There is somebody, the Lord is setting the person free. I'm seeing a friend going to a harbor list and they are asking the friend to give somebody and they wrote the name of that person. You are here now. In the name that is above all names. I'm serious. Don't think I'm just hyping you. In the name of Jesus, whoever's name has been written by any demonic friend or whatever herbalist, in the name of Jesus, because that person you keep seeing dead, dead people, you even saw yourself in a coffin. In the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit now. I'm going to pray for you and then we are going to pray for the sick right now ah. there is some serious deliverance I'm, I'm seeing something happening in the realm of the spirit this is this is this is a serious father let this lady be free right now in the name of Jesus Christ come you this lady come you love Jesus? Huh? Yes, sir. Come. You, I, I'm not condemning you, eh? Look at me. You have to be very serious with God. One, two, friends. Look at me. God has delivered you many times. You would have destroyed yourself. Huh? You're a small girl. You need to love God with all your heart. Please, be very careful so you don't go and put yourself in something that will destroy you. I love you, eh? I love you and that's why I'm telling you this. You need... You need somebody to counsel you and follow you up. Hmm? I'm not going to say everything I'm seeing, but you have to be careful. Because it's God that saved you now. I'm seeing something, a virus. Anyway, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for your daughter. Help her. By the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ I'm standing and I'm seeing a tree and that tree is this lady and something that was planted and the Lord is saying uproot it I uproot this thing now in the name of Jesus Christ I uproot it now the Spirit of the Lord is taking me to Benway State I've never been there physically but I'm seeing Benway Benway and I'm looking and I'm seeing like a tractor pushing trees down it's like there is a covenant that has to do with trees in the name of Jesus Christ if there is any family involved in this I command and uprooting every tree that has not been planted help them by my father every tree I see Benway State in the mighty name of Jesus let there be an uprooting an uprooting an uprooting and uprooting in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you, my dear. You are a nice lady, but there's bad luck in your life. Very bad luck. And the Lord wants to help you. Father, help your daughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bad luck be gone. Now and forever in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord help you come my dear let me pray for you I'm about to pray for the sick now our time is gone in the name of Jesus Christ there are some my spirit is heavy to prophesy but because we have to I want us to pray for the sick so that I can just make those declarations we may not have time for one-on-one -on -one prophecy but I'm telling you God wants to touch touch a lot of people my dear I want to pray for you in Jesus name the Lord is rolling away the reproach in your family 
rolling away the reproach in your family in the name of Jesus my dear look at me you are entering a new level of lifting you that's what I'm praying for you for I'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head and the Lord is saying I should tell you that is a new level of lifting you this lady looking at me I prophesy it over your life in the name of Jesus Christ who is this who Agnes Agnes where is she Abuja. Abuja, sir. your sister yes father in the name of Jesus I pray for this lady where is she Abuja, sir. she loves Jesus yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ pray that no man will come into her life and destroy her eh? in the name of is she married huh? in no. the name of uh, whatever it is in the name of Jesus Christ may God help you mama come let me pray for you it's your season of breakthrough come is this your child come boy come I'm looking at this boy and I'm seeing that God is going to use him this is a small boy boy how are you the, the boy doesn't even know but I'm going to pray for him Samuel did not know that he would become a great prophet one day when Eli he was just an innocent boy I'm going to pray for him mama please stand up I will pray for you look at me ma please don't be embarrassed but the Lord is saying he wants to take suffering from your life this thing they call in house wahala God wants to take it from your life you are a very sincere woman that loves the Lord but this this cause of hardship um, this woman loves the Lord with all her heart. Father, you, what's, what's the name of this boy? Riba. Huh? Lifted. Okay. Your name is Lifted? Yes. Father, I lay hands on Lifted. In the name of Jesus Christ, use him mightily. We are all products of your grace. Lift him and use him mightily. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I pray for you in the name of jesus christ and i'm telling you this the month of april is your month of strange breakthrough in the name of jesus christ the month of april is your month of breakthrough azuka come lift the camera first let me pray for you and then you keep the camera i want to pray for you because i'm seeing a big project coming for you and this project is going to lift you this is something that has to do with your snapshot but God is bringing someone. It's been something you have desired that God will bring someone to open a door. And truth, you have been faithful. You have even been serving in this house. But I want to pray for you. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, lift him. Take him to that dimension of grace. I release that anointing upon you. It will no longer be an ordinary camera. I call forth men that will lift you. I command it so. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ open doors for you open doors for you in the name of jesus christ come this lady um sarah come there is witchcraft in your family i have to pray for you this thing is affecting everybody in the family everybody everybody not there's no exception everybody lord take away this plague of witchcraft in the name of jesus christ wonderful people beautiful ladies but all kinds of trouble from the pit of hell in the name of jesus christ i silence the voice of the accuser i silence the voice of the accuser i silence the voice of the accuser in the name of jesus christ we are going to pray for the sick now listen i know that there are a number of people who came here sick and a number of you have come trusting god for healing and miracle let me pray for this lady how many of you have your prayer request now lift it up ushers your prayer request those online make sure we collect it this this lady let me have her hands lord jesus let this trap of darkness over this family represented by this lady give way now in the name of jesus christ just hold that gently should be fine submit your prayer request quickly now we are going to pray for the sick don't allow any nonsense remain in your body no matter how small make sure you insist that it leaves 
make sure you insist that it leaves we are going to be very fast please we'll be very fast now let me say this when you stand to receive healing don't just stand and be staring as if you are sleeping let your heart be open are we together number two accept whoever is praying for you ask you what is wrong you don't have to say okay it is my ears or my don't worry don't worry the people praying for you have been trained and the anointing of the spirit will touch it doesn't matter what auditorium it's a corporate grace that is working here hallelujah and for all of us who are seated whilst this is happening make sure you are praying because i'm, I'm literally sensing as if i want to throw up is the spirit of prophecy there's there's something that the lord is putting in my spirit to release and that's why i want to pray for the sick quickly so that we will pray this prophecy if we do this i'm satisfied in this service we have to be very fast so that we'll conserve time hallelujah jesus someone please help with collecting the request make sure that even those at the extremes of the road their requests are collected please everybody did father in the name of jesus we pray by the ministry of the spirit several people serving as contact points but we pray that your power and your life will touch the sick lord your people have come some of them with incurable diseases some of them with all kinds of devils i decree and declare that your anointing will prevail over every challenge let your people return with testimonies in the mighty name of jesus please be seated while you pray for a while as we pray for these people pray spiritualize yourself make sure that you are submitting your request and make sure you are praying thank you jesus my beautifier you have taken away the shame taking away the pain you make my life so beautiful my beautifier you have taken away the shame taking away the pain you make me just like you my beautiful you are taking away taking away the shame taking away the pain taking away the pain make my life so make beautiful my life so beautiful my beautiful my beautiful you are taking away taking away the shame taking away the pain Make me just like you. Make me just like oh, you. my beautiful, my beautiful. You are taking away, taking away the shame, taking away the pain. Away the pain. Make me just like you.
Lord Jesus, you gave this as a mystery in this house. We have received all kinds of awe-inspiring testimonies. Testaments of your life, your power, your might, your faithfulness. Lord, in this month of February, we look to you again to surprise us. Lord, represented here are the requests of people from several nations of the world and several across this nation. In the name of Jesus, Joshua Selman cannot answer any man's prayer. So Lord, I transfer the trust of your people to you. The one who is able to meet every need. And on the strength of the grace that only comes from you. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the resurrected Lamb, the one who is most victorious, I prophesy and I turn every request here to become a testimony in the name of Jesus. Lord, as I walk through these requests, in the name of Jesus, that is exactly how your people walk through every challenge. Every challenge, every challenge, no matter what it is, I decree and declare that the grace to triumph above it is released in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me, no matter what it is, no matter what it is, provided it found its way here in the name of Jesus Christ, the same hand that wrote it is the same hand that receives the testimony. The same hand that wrote it is the same hand that will receive the testimony. There are people who need to lack sleep for these prayers to be answered. May they lack the sleep. There are people who need to be promoted for this prayer to be answered. May they be promoted. There are agents of darkness that must be laid to rest for these prayers to be answered. May they be laid to rest. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. If they are still praying for you in any of the overflows, don't worry. You can just connect with them while I pray for you. By the grace of God, you will not write your request twice. I thought I was done, but I just felt drawn again to it. Whatever it is that you wrote here that requires a creative miracle, that means the solution is not currently in existence anywhere. May the one who created the heavens and the earth create your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to pray for you. As long as God grants me the grace, I will never stop prophesying over you. It is the greatest thing I think I can do. If I give a word of knowledge because I'm limited by time and I'm limited by my own understanding and my level of alignment to God, I may not be able to accurately address everyone. But when it comes to prophecy, everyone can receive. Are we together now? Wherever you are, you can receive. You've heard the testimonies. You've seen the things that happen. The Bible says everyone who speaks, let him speak according to the measure of grace. There are some things this anointing can do. And let's trust God that it happens in your life. Let's pray. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that for everyone here who started this year in tears already, that from January, February, you've not known joy. I declare that as this week ends, that's how your trouble and your sorrow ends too. The Bible says, though weeping endures for a night. It says, but joy comes with the morning. I decree and declare the kind of testimony that will make you get down on your knees and say lord i've seen you bless me but not this dimension may the god i serve release it to you anyone here jobless 
or trusting God for a better job in the name of Jesus between now and March miracle service return with your miracle job return with your miracle job return with your miracle job anyone here due for promotion and whether based on tribal sentiments or whatever it is you've been kept at a level in the name of Jesus I open the doors for you rise to a new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ every manifestation of delay in your life others move forward but when it gets to your turn something just clamps you in one position or slow progress slow progress is as destructive as delay I command speed to your life I speak speed to your life I prophesy speed to your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare every advantage that the enemy has over your life in the name of Jesus this is the season where all those doors are closed forever I pray for those in business here I speak over it the grace for multiplication let it come upon your business in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for those who are trusting God to correct certain things in their lives it may be results for students it may be something it may be a mistake of the past you've seen God correct things in strange ways here I command supernatural correction for you for every student here that the result you are holding is not your real result I don't care how long in the name of Jesus the son of the living God we correct it right here anyone here involved in any kind of project building project whatever major project you or your loved ones I decree and declare the finishers anointing comes upon that project in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray over your finances listen let me tell you this the Bible says believe in the Lord your God so shall ye be established he said believe in his prophets so shall you prosper if you truly believe God will surprise you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you I give you two weeks from today in the name of Jesus Christ that between now and the next 14 days let something notable happen to your finances listen I don't want you to think as I'm praying you are thinking oh God will use a B leave whoever God will use to him I'm not talking business in the name of Jesus I say it again between now and the next 14 days may the lifter of men surprise you in your finances hallelujah every gift of the spirit that you had once seen in your life and for some reason is either depleting in the grace for dispensing it or not there again I prophesy supernatural activation right now supernatural activation right now the supernatural grace for soul winning drawing people to God a strange grace that will not give you peace until people are coming to Jesus through you I release that grace over you I release that grace over you I release that grace over you take that grace now the grace to validate signs and wonders that through your hand listen not just through Joshua Selman in the name of Jesus those hands that are stretched towards me I prophesy to you the unction to walk in strange miracles receive it in the name of Jesus the grace to reproduce 
the miracles in this house I release that grace young and old male or female receive it in the name of Jesus I speak over your life that as you utter words concerning the destinies of men you will watch them come to pass with your very eyes in the name of Jesus Christ whoever needs to make peace with you I decree and declare the grace of God compels them to make peace with you hallelujah whoever has been directed by God to bless you and the devil is stopping them from obeying God is not necessarily financial it may be to bless you with an information access opportunity whoever is supposed to bless and lift you and in the name of Jesus the devil wants to stop them I clear the way for your contact with them in the name of Jesus anyone here who needs an urgent breakthrough maybe something that has to do with house rent or maybe something that involves the police just something that if God does not intervene the embarrassment is going to be serious I pray that between now and Sunday the God that I serve you may not see the wind you may not see the rain but brothers and sisters may my God step in and surprise you We're rounding up whatever has covered the glory of God upon your face so that people cannot see and partake of that grace and also reward you I tread that veil into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus I pray for any and everyone here suffering from any kind of barrenness in the name of Jesus Christ by next miracle service you come back pregnant I say it again by next by next month miracle service you return with your baby in your womb in the name of Jesus the spirit that makes you see what you want but never hold it is close to you you see it they promise you and say by tomorrow I will do something then in the night something happens in the name of Jesus everything your eyes have seen I put it in your hand everything your eyes have seen I put it in your hand hallelujah finally I call your destiny helpers from the north the south the east the west whether they are in this country or outside this country I don't know how God will make them meet you but I declare they must meet you in the name of Jesus they will not only meet you they will bless you in the name of Jesus they will not only bless you they will continue blessing you I multiply dreams and visions and encounters in your life whatever has choked away your prayer life you used to pray for two three four five hours now you pray for 10 15 minutes you are drowsy you are tired it's an attack it is an attack it is the devil you used to be consistent but right now you wake up in the night you pray for 10 minutes you are snoring back in the name of Jesus tonight let there be revival upon your prayer life revival over your prayer life the appetite to study the word you once had it but it went away and for some of you you've not read your bible since last friday it's not that you don't want to the grace to make it happen is no longer there i command tonight may that fire for the word come upon you hallelujah for all your loved ones who are connected to you whether they are born again or not because you came here tonight 
I stretch my hand. May the grace and the blessing that came to you, may it get to them too. In the name of Jesus Christ, give Jesus a clap. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.